Until the day with the dawn ringing in my ears Oh well, I turn to my TV show No better way, I gotta get myself into gear Let's go, oh And I feel good today With my wake up in the morning espresso I feel good today It's my feel good breakfast show Sunday. <laughs> it's time to celebrate, of course. It's Tuesday, and we're choosing to spend our Tuesday with you. And I feel so lucky because I get to spend it with you, Jamie. I know. Like family, and I haven't seen you in ages. I feel like we need a reunion, but guess what? We get to wake <laughs> up the nation. Good morning, everybody. It is a Health Tuesday here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And as we celebrate Child Protection Week, we're also going to be bringing you awareness to the health of our kids during this winter season. We know now's the time where we get the snotties, all oh, the yeah. runny nose. It's flu oh, season, yeah. and the parents out there need winter. some advice. Advice. is coming indeed. So don't worry, Mzansi, we've got you covered because we've got a panel of experts coming through this morning. First up, we've got the CEO of Tigerberg Children's Trust. It's Jason Falcon, and working in general pediatrics at Tigerberg Hospital is Professor Angela or Angela Dramowski. Now, it is your chance to get a free consultation. You know, we're looking after you, Mzansi, so this is your opportunity to ask those questions. You can ask our doctors about anything flu-related or any symptoms that you may have, especially with regards to your kids and your family. And of course, the WhatsApp number is on your screen right now in the corner, and you can come in WhatsApp, we'll send us a voice note and we'll definitely play it through and hopefully get you all the advice that you need today, right? Yeah, 63 8863 is that number. So please feel free to call us and send through those voice notes. Ask us any questions. We are here to serve you for the next three hours. <laughs> but also connect with you on social media. But one person to do exactly that is the beautiful Zoe Brown. Good morning, Mama. Oh, good morning. And yes, I love connecting with you on social media and we're making it even easier as we've got that WhatsApp line open where you now get to send us some voice notes. But this morning, our question for you on social media is, since it is becoming colder and we want to know, are you and your family getting the flu vaccine or are you boosting your immunity with any flu fighting meds or foods? I know everyone's got their own little remedy. So two Please do share that with us. I think a lot of people love their ginger shots. Quite a few people love some cayenne pepper. So let us know. And if you want to send us a voice note, that number is 063-408-408. And then it's 88863. See, it's still a new number, so we're all getting there, but it's on your screens right now, 063-408-8863. So make sure you get your voice notes through to us and that you get to share your flu-fighting medicines and remedies with us. But it's now that time of the morning for us to catch up with your morning headlines. Yes, Jamie. Thank you so much, Zoe. Starting on the national front this morning, the Supreme Court in Kabecha in the Eastern Cape heard arguments from environmental and civic groups that's opposed to the planned seismic surveys by Shell yesterday. The applicants are asking the court to set aside a decision from the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy that gave Shell permission for the exploration of oil and gas on the wild coast. Now, the Makanda Supreme Court last year granted an interim injunction to the environmental groups which banned Shell from continuing its exploration until the latest court application had been finalized. Then staying on the local front, ESCOM implemented stage two load shedding from 5 p.m. until 10 p.m. yesterday and also added that there is an elevated risk of load shedding over the coming weeks. Now, meanwhile, Johannesburg MMC for Environment and Infrastructure Service, Michael Sun, has condemned the attack on councillors in Soweto because of a lack of power supply. Sun said Councillor Lucas Lufuto of Ward 34 was physically beaten, while Councillor Nompumolelo Mazibuko of Ward 33 was taken hostage by residents demanding an end to lengthy blackouts in their area. Then looking to news on the international front, the president of the European, uh, European Union Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, has assured Africa that the EU is working on solidarity lanes, a method Ukraine can use to resume exports to alleviate a global food crisis. Meanwhile, President Vladimir Putin of R Russia has said he's ready to make a significant contribution to averting a looming food crisis if the West lifts sanctions imposed because of Russia's attack on Ukraine. Now, Ukraine and Russia produce some 30% of the global wheat supply. 
Then staying on the international front, Kalush Orchestra, the Ukrainian band, which won this year's Eurovision Song Contest, have sold their trophy for $900,000 to raise money for the war in Ukraine. Now, the crystal microphone was auctioned with the aim of buying drones for Ukraine's military. The band's appearance at a charity concert at Berlin's Brandenburg Gate also raised money for medical supplies. Now, the war has left at least 4,031 civilians dead and 4,735 injured, says the UN, along with an unknown number of combatants. Some 14 million people have also fled their homes since Russia invaded, invaded on the 24th of Feb. Now, if you're one of that champion cats above dogs, you're really not going to like slash believe the following story. Now, this is because a wee dog in Australia, a Jack Russell, has learned how to drive and also helps her boss on a huge farm in Victoria. Now, Lexi fancies herself a sheep herder, but actually she's much more the reason uh, being that her boss, Cameron Jack, has taught her to drive and she also helps out big time. Now, after a leg injury, Lexi stopped herding and then Cameron Cameron decided to teach her how to drive. Nowadays, for example, when Cameron has to drop off hay, he puts the truck in first gear and leaves Lexi at the wheel. As she steers, he's doing his job on the back of the truck. Now, while it would be easy to struggle with Lexi's driving as no more than her sitting pop, uh, propped up behind the wheel of a slow-moving truck, Cameron's convinced that he's been successful in teaching her how to drive. And who are we to argue? Well, Cameron concludes saying Lexi doesn't have her license yet. Remember, she's just just a dog. Well, she's doing better than me on that front. That being said, that is where I leave your 6 o'clock news headlines. We will be back on the top of the hour. Right now, it's time to have a first look at the sports. Here's Nature Boy for that. Thank you so much, Shami. Of course, so much sport action to look forward to. But for now, it's time to sport, uh, report on the latest when it comes to that sporting action. And starting off in soccer news, Zuhir Al Mutaraji was the two goal star as Weydad Casablanca defeated Egyptian outfit Al Ali 2 0 to win the CAF Champions League and complete a Moroccan club double in Africa this season. Now, Renaissance Pakane won the second tier CAF Confederation Cup on May the 20th and will face Weydad for the CAF Super Cup. Now, it was the third time Weydad conquered Africa, winning in 1992 and 2017, and the second triumph also came against Ali. Now, it was also a disappointing outcome for South African-born Ali coach Pizzo Motsimane, who had hoped to become the first coach to win the premier African club competition three consecutive times. Well, sticking to our soccer news and moving over to Europe now, where Chelsea's 4.25 billion, well, billion pound sale to a consortium led by American investor Todd Booley and private equity firm Clear Lake Capital has been officially completed. Now, the club was put up for sale in March before previous owner Roman Abramovich was sanctioned over his links to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now, Chelsea had been operating under a special government license, which would have expired on the 31st of May. Now, Booley said that he was honored, quote, and also quoted, wanted to make fans proud, unquote. Now, the consortium fought off 11 serious rivals to become the new owners in a sale process that started on the 2nd of March and comprised more than 250 inquiries. Well, we're interested to see how the rest of the team's success does continue for the next season. But moving ahead with the rest of the headlines when it comes to sport and moving to tennis now, where teenage sensation Holger Roon outmuscled world number four and last year's French Open finalist Stefano Tsitsipa 7 5, 3 6, 6 3, and 6 4 to move into the quarterfinals of the French Open. Now, the Dane joins fellow 19 year old Carlos Alcaraz, uh, which is of Spain in the last eight. And the first two time teenagers have made their stage or made that stage at a Grand Slam since 1994. Now, second seed Daniel Medvedev was another shock exit at Roland Garros after losing 6 2, 6 3, and 6 1 to Marin Cilic. Now, in the women's draw, Iga Swiatek equaled the third third best winning streak the century after beating Zheng Jingwen 6-7, 6-0 and 6-2. Now the 11th seed Jessica Pagula fought back to defeat 63rd ranked Irina Camelia Bagu 4-6, 6-2 and 6-3 and that was to reach the quarterfinals for the very first time. 
Now, sticking to our action, when we move over to cricket now, Trent Bolt and Henry Nichols will miss New Zealand's first test against England, despite being named in the squad for the clash starting at Lords on Thursday. Now, Bolt played in the Indian Premier League final for Rajasthan Royals on Sunday and is unlikely to recover in time for five days of test cricket. Now, Nichols has had a disrupted start to the tour of England due to injury problems and a bout of the coronavirus. Well, that's all we have for you when it comes to the headlines in sport. Next up, we've got Zoe standing by to give you the latest on all things when it comes to the weather. And the weather is causing a little bit of chaos all over the world. Now, in the wake of recent reports that this year would see more hurricanes than before, comes the news that Hurricane Agatha was barreling towards southern Mexico's Pacific coast yesterday morning, threatening to dump torrential rains to on beach resorts in the state of Oaxaca. Now, a Category 2 storm and the first hurricane to form in the eastern Pacific this year, Agatha was blowing maximum sustained winds of 160. 77 kilometers per hour, the Miami-based National Hurricane Center said. Authorities have set up some 200 shelters along the coastal region of Oaxaca with capacity to shelter about 26,000 people. Agatha is expected to dump 25 to 41 centimeters of rain on Oaxaca and up to 50 centimeters in some areas, which could spark lethal flash floods and mudslides. Agatha is unlikely to change in strength much before reaching land and should then weaken rapidly as it dissipates over southeastern Mexico later today. Well, from your weather developments, we now bring it back home where we look at those sunrise views that you, our talented viewers, have captured. Our first one is a regular, Pat Sunkel from Durban, who captured this early morning image of the sun beginning to rise from behind the mountains. And Miranda Kelly from Westbrook shared this beautiful silhouetted photo looking towards the ocean as the sun rises with hues of orange and purple lighting up the sky. There we go. Well, if you have a sunrise photo that you'd love to share, please do so on the Expresso Facebook page. But let's get into your temperatures for today. Heading over to Limpopo, if you're in Polokwane, a low of three and a high of 20. Mbombela, 726. Pretoria, four with a high of 18. It's sunny in Johannesburg today. Three is your low, 15 your high. Mahiking, one, reaching a high of 19. Klapsdorp, minus one with a high of 17 for today. Kimberley, minus one, reaching a high of 16. Bloemfontein, your cool for today is minus four, and your high is 16. Richards Bay, 921. Peter Maritzburg, 319. Sunny in Durban, 10 is your low, 21 your high. Mtata, 3, reaching a high of 18. If you're in East London, 10 is your high and low for today. Craddock, minus two, reaching a high of 16. Rainy conditions in Kabecha, a low of nine, a high of 18. If you're in George, 8 is your low, 19 your high. Cape Town, partly cloudy with a low of 10, a high of 18 for today. Worcester, 319. Sutherland, a cool zero for your low, 14 as your high. And Uppington, also a low of zero and a high of 20 degrees Celsius. Well, that's where I leave your weather for now. Another update coming your way at 7. Thank you so much, Zoe. Now, no matter the weather, always get up. Dress up and, of course, show up, right? Now, we've got a conundrum for you, I guess. You could call it that, and I need your help, Mzanzi, because skinny jeans are a fresh way to obviously anchor your cool streetwear aesthetic, and it's that that I'm exactly going for today. I want to upgrade my style, and it's, of course, hashtag Tuesday, and I need you to help me choose between two re jeans from Woolies. Now, we've got two options on the line. We've got a skinny blue and a skinny gray jean, as you can see right here next to me. Uh, let me hold it up for you, actually. We've got the blue jean and we've got the gray jean, and I have no idea which one's going to work well. And that's why I need your help, Mzanzi. So again, we got the blue skinny, or we got the gray skinny. This is from Reed uh, Denim, and that's from Woolies. So I need your help, Mzanzi. You need to come through and make me look good for the show and help me decide which of these is going to be the winner and the choice of the day. So let us know which color you prefer. You can head over to Express those social media pages and cast your vote. And don't forget to include the hashtag styled by Woolies. Right, Mzanzi? I need it to come through for me, please. <laughs>
your generosity can ignite a love for reading amongst our youth. Share your homegrown story. See Cadbury Story Edition Packs. There's a glass and a half in everyone. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back, everybody. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show here on S3. It's also Health Tuesday. Now, this week marks Child Protection Week, and it really is geared towards raising awareness of the rights of children, as well as their overall and their general well-being. As much as this week is really about the protection of children's rights, it is also a good opportunity to chat about children's health and also how to protect them during the pandemic, as well as during the flu season that's coming up very soon. That's right. So joining us on our panel this morning is CEO of the Tiger Bird Children's Trust, Jason Falcon, and Professor Angela Dromowski, who is the head of the clinical unit for pediatrics at Tigerberg Hospital. Now, if you have any questions for the doctors, please send us that voice note. Our WhatsApp number is 063-408-8863. It is on your screens right now, and that is the number for you to use. Good morning. So great morning. to have both of you here. Thank you very much. Oh, well, Jason, I'm going to start off with you. For people that don't know what the role of the Tigerbergs Trust is all about. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So in essence, we support the Tigerberg of, the, sorry, the children of Tigerberg Hospital um, in their health and wellness journey over, the, over their lifetime, um, which means 60% of the Western Cape children. So quite a lot of kids get supported by, by that institution. Sure. And we support them. And we've really had a front row seat to be able to see, you know, what you've been able to do with the trust. In terms of how much you've grown over this past few years, talk to us about the achievements and also the milestones that the trust has been able to achieve. Sure. So, you know, the trust has been in existence since 2001, so it's a long time. Um, in 2019, we, we started a rejuvenation exercise, trying to really position ourselves to support all those kids. You know, it's 60% of 2.4 million children in the province is a lot. Um, and what we were able to do is create um, a mechanism to rally people around those kids to support them and continue to grow that even through COVID. Um, I think we've grown by more than 30% over the past two years, which I think is, is testament to, not to us really, but to communities of people who are willing to support us and support mm -hmm. our children. And it's important to get the community involved to support. Now, Prof. Angela, I'm going to ask you this question because it is flu season. We're heading into winter. I have friends that's got little toddlers and I feel like the kids are always sick at the moment. Sure. What can parents do to help protect their kids during this flu season and given the fact that mm -hmm. we still have the COVID pandemic ongoing? Sure. So flu and COVID are really important causes of chest infections in, in children, particularly young children and children who've got underlying health conditions. Um, but in fact, there are many, many respiratory viruses. And that's why, as you say, young toddlers and infants are always snotty. Mm -hmm. um, and so, in fact, the most common cause of chest infection in children is another virus called RSV, respiratory syncytial virus. And it's been causing mayhem in Cape Town, in fact, for the last couple of months with Tigerberg and Red Cross and all of our uh, other referral hospitals being totally overwhelmed. So, so the experience you describe is, is really common. Um, so the main things in terms of prevention would be for young babies to breastfeed because that gives them a lot of additional protection from the mom's own antibodies, to make sure that no one's smoking around young children, to make sure they get all of their childhood immunizations. That's really important because that will prevent other bacterial forms of pneumonia. And then all the things we've done for COVID are really helpful in keeping children safe from viruses as well. So washing hands, covering your mouth and nose when you cough and sneeze, keeping kids out of creche and school when they're sick so that we don't spread viruses. All of those things will help. And just how important is it that we reinforce these things like washing hands, yes. you know, uh, sanitizing, wearing yeah. the mask, especially in this winter season? No, it's key. Those things will really help to reduce the spread of all viruses, not only COVID. Oh, well, we still have a lot more to come on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Our WhatsApp line is open if you have any comments or questions for our doctors. That number is 063-408-8863. Now, doctor, uh, in fact, I'm going to start off with you, um, Prof. Angela. With, with, when it comes to hospitalizations mm. around children, how frequent do we see it, especially coming now, this six, I call it the sick flu season mm. coming up? 
Yeah, sure. I mean, there, there is a huge spike in hospitalizations every year, probably between March and July, August. That is our busiest season in pediatrics, where pneumonia and all the different viruses and bacteria that can cause it are really frequent. Um, from a COVID perspective, we know that children fortunately have been less directly affected by COVID mm -hmm. infection, although we do see particularly <coughs> young children and children with cancer and other forms of immunocompromise getting quite sick from COVID. Uh, and in fact, about 60% of children who've been hospitalized with COVID are young, under the age of four. And right now in Cape Town, there's probably still about 40 children hospitalized across all of our facilities with COVID. So children are not unaffected, but they've been more indirectly affected. So we know they've had interrupted schooling. Many children have lost parents. Mm. Um, many children who are already vulnerable have become more malnourished, have not had their other health care needs seen to. So COVID has had a major negative impact for children in South Africa and worldwide. Yeah. Scary stuff and very really sad at the same time. We also have a caller from the Eastern Cape now that's weighing in and she sent through this voice note. Let's take a listen to it. Good morning, good morning, great team of Expresso Show. Yes, myself and my family, we have uh, boosted and we also drinking the mixture of uh, ginger and lemon, everyone in the house, uh, so that our immune system can stay boosted and flu free. <laughs> this is no symptom to be from Engama Kwe. Oh, I love it. We also have Obeda Sali uh, right here from Cape Town, who also sent through a voice note. Hi, morning, Obeda here. Yes, I've been vaccinated. Got my flu back last month, and I'm taking my normal vitamins. Thank you. Bye. Okay, mm. so a lot of our viewers are sharing some of the remedies that they are using to boost their immune system. Mm. When it comes to um, our first voice note that came through, the, the ginger shots and the, mm. you know, you going for the, the, the natural route to boost your immune system, is that something parents can also, you know, give their kids to make sure their immune system stay nice and healthy? Sure, I mean, I think a healthy diet and taking things that are high in vitamin C and zinc is always helpful, um, but certainly from an older adult perspective, the main thing to do is to be vaccinated. That is the cornerstone of prevention and all the other things will help and add value. Well, our panel is not going anywhere. If you have any more questions, do weigh in. That WhatsApp number is 063-408-8863. We'd love to hear from you. and the lockdown it really did open up a whole new world of adaptation within uh, of course all of these added twists to everyday life but over the past few, few weeks maybe five weeks to be exact we've met some of the most incredible people lucky winners from the added twist csi campaign who have been so inspired and so inspiring with their stories it's now time to meet the sixth and final winner it's banele masuku <laughs> The Edit Twist campaign sees the devastating effects COVID-19 has had on our fellow citizens, which is why its social investment driver asked consumers to nominate a family or anyone in their community most affected by the pandemic and who they felt would benefit the most from an Edit Twist hamper. Brimming with favorite Tiger Brands products as well as a 2,000 Rand cash prize for an extra boost to help the winning family. Let's meet the latest winner of this amazing initiative, Banele Masuku. pandemic affected us with my, me and my family so much to the point whereby we couldn't like go out and buy some some stuff for our, for the kids so so as for edit twist the year of the level it go by your intestines are you tina num de nom not footy tina num de nom pella we were going to have a new foot about to leave to the little to have a good edit twist now i'm over just a tool leader we edit twist i was the little booty now edit because <laughs>
We've been adding a twist to our daily lives for a long time now. What's changed is how the national lockdown has made us look for value in our purses and different products in our kitchen cupboards. We all need a range of uses for the products we choose and more flavor from the daily meals we cook with love for our families. You too can make your buck go further by using what you have in your cupboards just by adding a twist to lift your everyday meals and create the most delicious dishes for your families and loved ones to enjoy. Uh, honoring Banele's hero product from his incredible hamper. And congratulations, Banele. We have the most scrumptious dish up our calendar sleeves. You're going to love this one, okay? Because, madam, yes. you are in the house. Yes. And we know when I see you, non miso, <laughs> it's going to be a good time. It's going to yes. be a good one. Thank you. Mm. I'm absolutely glad to be back. I love to be here. I love the atmosphere in the show. It's absolutely wonderful. Well, I love the atmosphere that you bring to our kitchen. <laughs> it's just pure magic. You always find a way to add a twist. Uh, please tell me what we're making today. So today we're making rangoons, okay? We're making some rangoons. We're going to fill them up with some mushroom. Okay. And you're going to be helping me along. Hey. They're called rangoons. Yes, rang rangoons. I've never heard of rangoons before. So what exactly is a rangoon? So they originate in the South Asian okay. uh, parts of, the, uh, of Asia. And essentially, they are deep they are deep fried. So there's a difference between rangoons and wontons. Uh, wontons are typically a Chinese dish. Yes. And they would be boiled. OK. Oh, but today, we are preparing ah. rangoons. Yes, we are not going to be frying ours. Of course, we're just going to um, actually just brush them with some oil yeah. and uh, bake them. Because okay. you are the type of queen that likes to add a twist. Talk yes. about taking uh, an existing recipe and really giving it a brand new life altogether. I yes. love that. So you've got your mushrooms all cubed up nicely going mm. there and then mm. some oil going in. Are and you, how much oil are you going in with? Oh, so we're just, we're just eyeballing it today, okay? So you don't okay. want to add too much, but you want to just saute your mushrooms until they're soft. Okay. Okay, and of course, you would saute to add some mushroom with some garlic, and it, you can already smell this yes. is not so beautiful. Yes. But the essence is that you don't want your mushrooms, for example, drenched in the oil, right? It's really about lightly using the oil. Yes, yes, Love yes. Love that. Yes. Okay, cool. Yes, of course, then we're going to saute the mushroom until they're soft, okay. and then we want to leave them to cool for a little bit. Okay. Okay? All right. And and um, so in the meantime, we have already prepared our mushroom filling there. So if you can start off by helping me. Okay. You want to take a, a spoonful of the mushroom filling. Great. Put it right so at the center of the wrapper. This is easy enough. This is yes, really this easy is, enough. Yes. And, 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 and uh, what, when would this sort of thing be served, non -Denise? Oh, you could serve it for dinner or, or oh, lunch. Okay, so it's not a snack because, Mina, I'm already thinking, okay, oh, of you this also is the have perfect a, a snack for a Tuesday. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. Okay, cool. So that's done. Yeah. And I'm going to just brush some water around here so that we're able to actually fold these. Yes, yes, yes. And we are obviously serving ours today with some mm. Mrs. Paul's sweet chili sauce. Now, isn't yeah. this a blast from the past? No, that is like a <laughs> classic of note, a blast from the the past absolutely without a doubt uh, you know mrs balls is humbled to be celebrating 150 years of being in south african homes i mean we all know mrs balls showing just how much everybody loves the missus and i really do love that but the mrs balls sweet chili it does prove that you know sweet can be spicy with the right balance and the right combination of sweet and savory which you're going to see coming through in this recipe and mrs balls is now available in an affordable range of 375 grams. Uh, it's a new squeeze bottle, which I think is so convenient. I love it. Right? Mm. I love this because it was always in the fridge in my house. I was thinking about it last night. Uh -huh. I remember like when, when, when the, towards the end of the month and there's not much in the fridge, but and the then Mrs. Balls 
there. Chili sauce is always yep, there. Yep, always. <laughs> okay, so we've added some, some onions, some peppers, mm. and some salt to taste, and now we're going to add our cream cheese into Done. our dish. But if you're at home and you've got a little bit more time, mm. you want to actually let your mushrooms just cool up, cool down just a little bit. Before, okay, before you, before you add this, the cream. right? And if you're plant-based, you could always substitute the cream cheese for something like tofu. Ah. I like to use silken tofu for this nice. type of recipe. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, and then of course, once we have cooked our mushrooms, uh -huh. we want to stuff them as you have so beautifully done there. Right. And we want to put them in, in a baking pad which we've lined or greased. With we, a little bit, yeah. Yes, of course. And then we want to just brush them with some oil. Okay, okay. do you see how quickly I'm going here? You are I'm trying really to keep quickly. up with you on this one. <laughs> so you do that. I'm gonna just get my hands clean before we get the oils in. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so we want to brush it with some thing. oil. Okay, cool. Yeah, you do that. Yeah, and then bake them for about 12 to 15 minutes. Fabulous. Okay, okay. cool. So that you've got that. Yeah. You don't need the spray on you the. You don't bed. need the spray. Of course. Okay, perfect. Right. Okay. And then, and then we bake them. 12 to Voila. 15 okay. minutes. This going in the oven, 12 to 15 minutes. I love that it's quick as well. So you can literally make quite a few of them, like really, really quickly. Yes. You know? Oh my goodness, it smells so lovely in here. And what you're going to get is a delicious snack looking. Look like at that. that. I have to taste it. Yeah. No, please, Denise, I have please. to give this one a try. Okay, please. let's see what this is about. Listen, if you want the recipe, and I know you do, go on to expressoshow.com, get your hands on it. There, you're going to find a list of all of the ingredients. But you saw it's not a lot of ingredients, which is perfect, but also a step by step guide on how to make this. I'll tell you now. Okay. Mmm. Ooh, mm. so delish, right? It's that classic taste of Mrs. Ball's punching. Yes, And yes, taking yes. me abroad. <laughs> I love this. This is really fantastic, no, Domi, so. Yeah. Well, let me tell you this. Over the past few weeks, right, we've shown so much of the inspiring ways in which you can bring the classics uh, that come through as part of our Edit Twist campaign. And I think it's been absolutely incredible. Now, to get your hands on this recipe, remember, go on to expressoshow.com. It's a hit. It's going to be a hit. Love it. Mm. Who said sweet can't be spicy? Enjoy Mrs. Ball's sweet chili sauce. It's the perfect balance of sweet and savory. With a hint of heat, everybody loves the Mrs. I can make my day.
back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. And for this Medical Tuesday, we are discussing Children Protection Week on the show this morning. With our panel, we have CEO of the Tigerberg Children's Trust, Jason Falcon, and Professor Angela Dramowski, who is the head of the clinical unit for pediatrics at Tigerberg Hospital. Now, if you have any questions for the docs, please send through those voice notes. That number is 063-408-8863. And the focus over the last couple of years has been on the COVID-19 pandemic. But in recent weeks, there have also been reports around the world about cases of monkeypox. Mm, well, Professor Damaski is here to chat a little a bit more about that. And Professor, should we be concerned? Monkeypox, we've seen in the States, I've been reading the news headlines with regard to this. Should that be an area of concern in South Africa right now? So I think COVID has taught us that any infectious disease is just a plain ride away. Um, and certainly monkeypox is a contagious illness. It belongs to the family of pox viruses. You've probably heard of smallpox, which was eradicated through vaccination um, many decades ago. So monkeypox is related, but it's much less severe and fortunately a little bit less contagious than smallpox. It presents quite similar to kind of even chickenpox with high fever, a blistering rash, headaches, muscle aches, um, and it, it can also affect children as well as adults. The cases so far worldwide are in about 15 countries, about 150 people affected. Um, so I think the threat to South Africa right now is low but we should be really vigilant and looking out for any unusual cases of rash, fever, and so on. Um, we fortunate in South Africa, we have a fantastic Institute for Communicable Diseases up in Johannesburg, and they will certainly be all over this if there are any cases in South Africa. So be alert, but I wouldn't be worried at this stage. Okay, that's, that's very good to know. And I know, um, Jason, a lot of parents, a lot of even young Patience. I mean, it is child, Children Protection Week this week that we're putting the spotlight on. But what has the impact of the COVID pandemic, as well as, you know, kids being hospitalized, being isolated and not being able to be close to their parents, whereas in the past they would be able to have the visits that they would usually have. What impact has this pandemic had on the kids and especially their mental health? So the impact has been, um, has been huge and we suspect it will continue to affect him for, for months, if not years, to come. Um, Tigerberg Hospital has the only dedicated adolescent psychiatric ward in the province, and they are inundated with um, children with severe mental health um, trauma. And, um, you know, for us, it's, yes, it's a medical condition why they are there in the hospital, but kids also just want to play and have fun. Mm. So how do we as a trust fill that gap? Um, earlier this year, we, we organized a, a break dancing and DJing event for them, <laughs> and they just lost their minds. And for two weeks, that's all they could talk about, you know. Oh, so sweet. That must be so cool. <laughs> well, we have Robin from uh, Johannesburg also weighing in on the conversation this morning. Let's take a listen. Good morning. This is Robin. I have a question about the flu. Um, flu comes with coughing, and how do you get rid of the cough? after your flu okay. because it is sometimes it's ongoing for about three two to three weeks Okay. Professor, maybe you sure, can weigh in on the show. Sure. So yes, it's very common. Um, obviously, with any viral infection, you get lots of secretions in your airways, and, and that's what causes that irritating cough. Um, personally, I use something called ACC 200, which helps kind of to break down your phlegm and cough it up. Um, but you could also kind of do steaming, inhaling of hot water, the various kind of home remedies that you can try as well. And then certainly looking after your health. Again, not smoking, eating healthy, sleeping and resting, give your body time to recover. Mm. Well, I hope that answers your, your question uh, to our caller. We also have Subongo Musa from Cape Town also weighed in on the conversation. Good, good morning. I'd like to ask if ginger and garlic helps with flu. Thank you. Oh, ginger and garlic. Well, we love that re remedy. Uh, Dr. Jason, something I wanted to find out as well is in terms of this past two years, what has been the most challenging aspect for you and the trust? Well, you must remember that COVID is larger an adult disease and we support children. So the very first um, impact on us, this was at the beginning of COVID, was that funding dried up. Mm. Um, <clears throat> both locally and internationally. And um, that took a year to start to 
to start to open up. In a way, it was, it was very challenging for us, but it also forced us to find other ways of staying in the game, for lack of a better word, and continuing to be able to support our kids. So um, after two years of, of really battling on the front, front line for financial support, uh, we have a lot of tools today that we, I guess, maybe would never have had before. Mm. That's amazing. And, and do you find now that life is going back to somewhat of a, a new normal? Are people supporting the initiative? You know, the funny thing is, yes, um, but also there are much more needs. Okay. So um, in terms of um, where the money goes, it's spread much wider. Okay. But also we are finding that the, the war in Ukraine has had a drastic impact on our ability to, to raise funds in the EU. Okay. Uh, which is, I guess, where about 90% of our funding resides. Okay. So not related to COVID, but in something new to fight about. In what way? So um, many donors in the EU are actually now supporting um, the cause in Ukraine as opposed to supporting, supporting us. Okay. So, yeah, the but battle continues. The battle continues, but people can get in touch with you if they want to support the Tigerberg Children's <laughs> Trust. And, of course, um, Jason as well as Professor Angela, they're not going anywhere. They're going to be with us for one more segment as we continue to talk Children Protection Week. And, of course, it's all about health today. We're putting the spotlight on their health. Oh, nice. Incredible trust, nice. an incredible organization. Honestly, yeah. Lisa, when I have these conversations, it feels like we're talking about heroes, truly people doing such incredible things and for our community, it's because right? because they are. It really <laughs> is because they are. And that's why every Tuesday we take some time out to bring you Pharmacy of the Week. Uh, that's a space where we really acknowledge the incredible people who we see as heroes. They work on the front line. Yeah, now this is our way to say thank you to these brave healthcare workers. And it's proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave. So let's take a look at this week's Pharmacy of the Week. It's Aldo Farm Medicine Deport in Eldorado Park. Check this out. <laughs> our pharmacies are on the front line of healthcare. This is Pharmacy of the Week. I've been serving this community for quite some time now. And it's a privilege to serve this community. We are like family and they all really come in and ask for services that we can supply and we deliver those services quite accurately with confidence as well. The staff in fact was resilient, they had to adapt to a new environment and they had to start gaining knowledge of what's happening to the community and what's happening out there. You know, to have courage to do the moral things, kept them going all the time. Pharmacy of the Week, proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave. <coughs> and flu symptoms disrupting your day? At Cock Ingram, self-medication offers relief. Available without prescription. At Cock Ingram OTC, adding value to life. Ah, oh, that is really beautiful. Eldo Farm out in Eldorado Park. They do incredible work. It's a big community that, and you can imagine to be the single one place that people can trust to go to. I love that. Truly, and we are thanking you. And for all those fighting on the front line, we appreciate you. <laughs>
To S3's Feel Good Breakfast Show, we are wrapping up our panel discussion on Child Protection Week with J Jason Falcon, as well as Professor, uh, Professor Angela Domowski. We have touched on COVID-19 and also the mental aspect of the last few years, especially on children. Now, the discussion continues, and we are encouraging every single one of you to get in touch with us with any questions you may have via our WhatsApp number, which is 063-408-8863. Thank you so much for staying with us this morning. Well, this is our final segment and I feel like just to wrap it up um Prof. Angela, when it comes to the COVID vaccine and just the flu vaccine mm -hmm. for children, can they get both and how far apart should it be? Sure. So they're both very safe and effective vaccines. If you're going to give them together, they should be given on the same day, separate arms, otherwise at least a month apart. Um, the flu vaccine can be given from the age of six months um, and the COVID vaccine, however, currently in South Africa is only licensed for children 12 years and older. But for example, in the States and many places overseas, they're giving it to children as young as five to 11 and it's about to be licensed for children younger than five overseas. So I think shortly within the next couple of months, we should be able to vaccinate the majority of children who are also vulnerable to COVID and long COVID and obviously don't want to have school disruption and and potentially make family members ill. Mm. So yeah, absolutely both safe, give them at the same time or separately a month apart. Well, you heard it from the professor herself. That being said, we have two callers from Kabeha right now, Asim Matle, uh, up first with her voice note. Goodness. Good morning. My name is Asim Matle. I have a question regarding the flu. I have a five month old baby who has um, a blocked nose. Now it's difficult for him to breathe and I'm um, breastfeeding. So when I'm feeding him, he just can't breathe since he tries to breathe through his mouth. How can I help him? Okay. Sure, thanks Asimakhle. That's a very common problem and makes it really difficult to feed your baby when their nose is blocked because small babies are what we call obligate nasal breathers. They have to breathe through their nose. Um, and so what you need to do about 10 minutes before you breastfeed is either put in sort of some nose drops like normal saline. Some moms actually use breast milk, which is really effective at clearing out the secretions and your baby will be able to feed more easily once the nose is unblocked. I've seen my friend use that little um, suction sure. tool, yes. and I'm like, oh, you really have yes. to love your child to do that. <laughs> yeah, so you describe this little plastic aspirator, and you can literally suck out the secretions yeah. also before feed. So you can try that too. Physically remove it or dissolve it with saline or milk. Nice. That's why I'm not ready for motherhood just yet. <laughs> Trust me, when it you happens, will be. you will be. You will be. There's no choice. You have to do it. We also have another caller uh, from Kobeha as well. Let's take a listen. Good morning. I just wanted to know if having a sore throat is part of your flu symptoms or does it mean something else? Okay, so we have someone asking if mm -hmm. having your sore throat just part of flu symptoms or could it mean something else? Sure, so sore throat is really common, can be caused by bacteria and viruses, including COVID, including flu. So the sore throat on its own really doesn't help you. But if you have other symptoms that are suggestive of flu or COVID, stay home, isolate, self-medicate if you're really unwell seek medical attention. Yeah. Definitely. Now, Jason, I know that you've just mentioned that funding has dried up. People are slowly coming back and now there's different elements causing that funding to not flow as much as you would like it to. So how can our viewers watching now support the Tigerberg Children's Trust? How can they show support and also be, you know, be part of your mission? So if you'd like to make a direct donation, um, if you go to our website, which is tigerbergchildren.org.za, you'll find a donate page there. We'd gladly accept any donations the public would like to send our way. But uh, more interestingly, if you'd like to become a part of our organization, there's a volunteering platform called the Champions for Children. You can join there. We do all sorts of wonderful things, including fundraising together through events and various things like that. So go to our website and explore and become a part of our family. We definitely will do that. Also, Professor, maybe any last words for any of the parents out there as we go into winter season, maybe just to wrap up in everything. Yeah, so obviously being child protection week, your child's health is really important. Make sure you breastfeed when they're small babies. Make sure they eat a healthy, nutritious diet. 
get them vaccinated. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, and obviously when your child is sick, please keep them at home for a few days so that we don't keep spreading winter viruses and COVID. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for joining us and being part of this conversation. We want to continue this conversation online. So if you have seen our Good Morning post, please let us know if you are, you know, using any of your own remedies. How are you boosting your immune system um, heading into this flu season and colder months? And of course, we also have that WhatsApp voice note line open. That number is 63 408 Oh, this is good. It is. Just being nostalgic at the moment, just thinking of uh, these conversations of being a kid, sometimes yeah. being sick at home, but I don't know, for me, the whole school thing just kind of brings so much joy when I think of the memories. I don't know about yeah. you, Tubbs. But you remember primary school? Yeah, it was just fun. <laughs> it was just like a lot of fun, a lot of friends, a lot of playing, and I don't know, it just yeah. makes me smile, but I don't know about you. I, I think for me, it's more than Milo, because that's really when oh, Milo yeah. was the main <laughs> staring in my life. Uh, and we know that primary school is, is a blast. You know, it can be. you got that max maximum fun, minimum responsibility, you don't pay rent, you don't have to work. At least that's how I remember it to be. I don't know about what they do these days. But uh, for one super mum, her name is Karen, the reality of a day in the life of her daughter, Logan, it did leave her feeling, uh, you know, the energy gap when she went back to school. Uh, well, let's see what happens uh, in the day in the life of, and I'm sure this will definitely be a pick-me-up. <laughs> right. has to be. <laughs> One bold soul who put her hand up to return to school and give us a picture of a typical day through the eyes of a parent is Karen Lant. What she was about to experience firsthand may well surprise you. Karen, it's go time. It's very exciting to be back at school today. Just to see the hustle and bustle of the children, um, the atmosphere, the vibe. I think the biggest challenge for me today would be the focus and concentration and the mindset shift from going from something that's uh, a physical activity to a mind activity and to keep that energy and focus up. I think that's the biggest challenge for me. that my mom was coming to school it was I was excited and happy for her first day of grateful most important thing for me that I need to prepare is just to uh, have a healthy breakfast and to keep the energy levels up um, other than that we'll have to see what the day holds I notice energy dips in my students, especially in the morning when they get to school. Um, a lot of the time they haven't had breakfast. Um, by the time they get to school, they are still, they're still tired. At our school, we have something called a go snack time. Uh, this is a short time that they are allowed to have a little piece of fruit or vegetable, and it just keeps, it just wakes up the brain. I think Logan is very excited to have me at school. Often our times in the evening is very limited because I am a working mom. So just to have me here and experience this journey with her and to see what she goes through every day, I think it's really exciting. <laughs> fitted in very well in the class. I can see she has good energy this morning. I'm not sure how, how well her energy will be at the end of the day, um, but she's very eager and she's very keen. I can see her, she got a bit stiff in assembly, but, but yeah, she's done well. I didn't know this was gonna happen actually. Um, it actually felt really quite fun because actually the parent sits next to me, so which is I was very happy and stuff. Ever thought of trading places with your child? Dropping them at the office to see your crazy workday while you have a ball at school? Not so fast. Between school, activities and play, the demands on them have really surprised me. And the big takeaway is, we've got to keep them energized for all that, every day. This is not as easy as it 
was very exciting to be back at school, uh, although I did find the whole school experience a bit overwhelming. Things that I thought was going to be easy and this was going to be a walk in the park was absolutely not. I have a huge respect for the students and the teachers. Having my mom spending with me, it's just weird and fun and exciting. part of today spending time with my daughter just being able to see a journey going through and experiencing what she goes through every day and seeing actually how hard it is I don't think parents realize how hard it is and that's exactly what I found today so I absolutely love spending time with her it was amazing I think she's gonna feel great and happy for what she has done today I honestly expected to have a different experience. I thought this was going to be easier breeze. I quickly found out that it wasn't. I have a new respect for the kids in general. I have a new respect for my kids. Kids are very busy and during the playtime, um, I was hoping I'd have a bit more time to relax and unwind, but it was just on this go, go, go. And then we're moving from classes and from one activity to another activity. Um, so my expectations were, were definitely not managed. I had a whole different view. Thank you for having me at your school today. I love this. Didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. If we get this right and can energize our kids with a solution as elegantly simple and tasty as a glass of Nestle Milo each day, imagine how far our kids can go. <laughs>Zanzi, your feel-good breakfast show. We're opening up right here on S3. And I'm still going to need your help to figure out what clothing I'm going to be wearing. So come through on that poll and give me a decision. But standing by right now, of course, is the beautiful Jamie Lee Donberg has gone on the hour and it's time for the news. Let's check it out. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Mr. Aldamone. Starting on the national front, a 45-year-old man was sentenced to an effective 28 years in prison on Monday after being convicted of conspiracy to hunt rhino, two counts of hunting, as well as killing protected species and one count of hunting without a permit. Now, the Mpangeni Regional Court in KZN sentenced Michael Masuku for incidents that took place in the Shlushluwe Umfalozi Game Reserve in October 2018. A state witness gave evidence linking Masuku directly to the crimes, especially the shooting of a white and black rhino. Then the Supreme Court in Kabecha in the Eastern Cape heard arguments from environmental and civic groups opposed to the planned seismic surveys by Shell yesterday. The applicants are asking the court to set aside a decision from the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy that gave Shell permission for the exploration of oil and gas on the Wild Coast. Now, the Makanda Supreme Court last year granted an interim injunction to the environmental groups, which banned Shell from continuing its ex exploration until the latest court application has been finalised. Then looking to news on the international front, one of England's most well-known historic landmarks, Stonehenge, has been included in the celebration of the reign of Queen Elizabeth with the projection of eight portraits of the monarch on its stones ahead of the highly anticipated Platinum Jubilee weekend. Now the same will be done on the Marble Arch as well. The projections are meant to reflect the 96-year-old monarch across each of the decades of her reign, including the one starting right now. Now, Queen Elizabeth's 70th Jubilee begins on the 2nd of June with the Trooping of the Colour, an annual spectacular military parade for her birthday. Then the President of the European, European Union Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, has assured Africa that the EU is working on solidarity lanes, a method Ukraine can use to resume exports to alleviate a global food crisis. Meanwhile, President Vladimir Putin of Russia has said he's ready to make a significant contribution to averting a looming food crisis if the West lifts sanctions imposed because of Russia's attack on Ukraine. Now, Ukraine and Russia produce some 30% of the global wheat supply. Then Ikasi Fashion Week hosted its 15th showcase on Sunday at Duduza Rank in Kwatema near Springs on the East Rand. This year's installment aimed to raise awareness about taxi violence through fashion. Now founder Stefan Monoki said they wish to change people's perspectives about South African taxi ranks. Taxi ranks in South Africa are known for violence and brutal killings. We wish to change this mindset. Who does a fashion show at a taxi rank? That on its own is mind-blowing, stated Monoki. Now, local and international designers were invited to showcase at the event as well. Monoki added that there are also some positive elements attached to taxi ranks, which can be overshadowed by the negative at times. Now, local fashion designers showcased their talent through their garments at the Ikasi Fashion Week. Monoki also concluded, and I quote, taxi ranks are places of peace and harmony where people can sit down and watch a fashion runway. And some of the taxi drivers are also part of the cast. On that note, that is where I leave your 7 o'clock news headlines. It's time to have another look at the weather. Here's Zoe. Thank you, Jamie. And now for some environmental news with a difference. A man wearing a wig and lipstick who arrived at the Louvre in Paris in a wheelchair smashed a cake into the glass protecting Leonardo da Vinci's 16th century masterpiece, the Mona Lisa. And this is in an apparent climate change protest. The 36-year-old man who has not publicly been identified was detained and sent to a police psychiatric unit. Think of the earth was what the man shouted as security guards escorted him away during the incident on Sunday. And he also said there are people who are destroying the earth. Think about it. Artists tell you, think of the earth. That's why I did this. It's unclear what, if any, charges have been filed. The Louvre said yesterday the Mona Lisa was not damaged. The painting, valued at around $870 million, has been on permanent display at the Louvre since 1797, except during the Franco-Prussian War in the 1870s and World War II. 
Well, we're certainly going to bring it back home to our own shores as we look at those sunrise photos that you share with us every morning. Nancy Governor from Park Rennie captured this breathtaking image of the sun rising between the clouds. And this is a beautiful sky-filled day overlooking the ocean. And then Jolene Otaler from East London woke up, our, um, woke up on the same side of the bed, and in fact, the right side as she headed to the beach to capture this phenomenal view of the sun rising over the fresh waves in the distance. Absolutely beautiful. Well, let's look at your temperatures. For Polokwane today, your low is 3, your high 20. Mbombela, 7, with a high of 26. Pretoria, sunny, falls your low, 18, your high. Johannesburg, 3, reaching a high of 15. Mahiking, 119. Klaatsort, minus 1 is your low, 17, your high. Kimberley, also minus 1, with a high of 16 for today. Bloemfontein, slightly cooler, minus four is your low, 16 your high. Richards Bay, nine with a high of 21. Sunny in Peter Maritzburg, three with a high of 19. Durban, sunny, 10 is your low, 21 your high. Mtata, 318. East London, 10 is your temperatures for today. If you're in Craddock, minus two is your low, 16 your high. Kabecha, 9, reaching a high of 18 with some rain. George, 8, 19. Cape Town, 10, 18. Worcester, 3, 19. Sutherland, 0 with your low and 14 as your high for today. And a sunny day in Uppington, reaching a high of 20 degrees Celsius. And that's where I leave your weather for now. A final update coming your way after 8. Uh, well, look, earlier on, we asked you to choose between two pairs of jeans for Raoul de Bonnet to wear on the show this morning. The skinny blue jean or the skinny grey jean. It's tough to pick between two skinny jeans because they're all really good. But we have seen what you guys have said. Let's see some of your comments that have come through. Personally, I prefer the blue, but let's see what you guys had to say. Okay, cool. Arlene Stevens says, good morning, Expresso team. The blue skinny will fit you perfectly. Have a blessed day and stay safe and warm, Team Express. So thank you, Arlene. Uh, Obedia Sally says, Morning, Ryle and team. You are very handsome. So one or two, but personally, I like uh, a blue, uh, I like the blue jeans, hashtag Express the Show. We also got one from Joan Cameron says, hashtag Tuesday, skinny blue jeans. Angie Governor says, skinny blue jeans, please, and thank you. Lucy says, the blue skinny will be perfect, hashtag styled by Woolies. Michelle Bessick says, morning, Express or morning show. It's a yes for the grey jean on this happy Tuesday. The only one vote for the grey jean. It seems like the blue skinny jeans have won. Let's see what Ral actually looks like in them. In those jeans. Come on in. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh you're feeling yourself. Oh, you're feeling yourself. What do you think, man? I I'm feeling it. <laughs> I am feeling it. This looks really, really good. How does yeah? it feel? It feels so good. Firstly, it hugs the, it hugs the body, right? Oh, so yeah, it does that. the skinny factor. Yeah. But what I love is, especially for someone like me, you know how much I like to move during the day? Yeah. Check this out. Full okay. range squats, baby. Oh, are you going to be like got... randomly throwing squats yeah. in the middle of like... There's a good bit of stretch in this, so it actually feels really comfortable. It's almost like active tights in a yeah. way, but yeah. it's got the warmth of a Can denim. I feel them? Of course you may. Oh, my word. Of course you may. They're so don't, good Don't get too caught up, though. I know how these... Really, really <laughs> nice on you, man. Yeah, I like that. No, but I absolutely do love it, Tommy. So thank you, Mzansi, for choosing correctly. You chose yeah. something which I absolutely love, and I think the rest of my day is going to be perfect. Uh, and you can do the exact same thing by getting yourself a pair of jeans that they've got at Woolworths. You can shop this look uh, online, in store, or on the Woolies app. It looks good. You're probably going to be walking around and people are going to be going, I like that on you, man. <laughs> I like that on you. Do you want to feel it again? <laughs> <laughs> Go shop it right now, in store, online, or on the app. You look really good. I like that. <laughs>
you always know how much I love you. I hope that you never stop learning and growing. That you'll be brave and joyful and kind. And that one day, when you look at me and I look at you, we'll love the wonderful you that you've become. It all begins with purity. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Introducing new Panado Pediatric Syrup 5 ml sachets. They're really convenient to pack and easy to use, so you're always prepared for pain and fever anytime, anywhere. Oh, welcome back, everybody. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show here on this Tuesday. Now, we know all parents want is the best for their kids. We all want it. But when it comes to the health, it is no different as well. Now, with winter season approaching, parents know how important it is to be up to date with their kids' general health. Now, you have to tell us everything we need to know is multimedia health specialist, a good friend of ours, the sexy Dr. Darren Green. Ooh, I had to say that. God. I had you to say God. that. The my... most handsome doc in the building. <laughs> I was just telling you off air, my family loves him so much and when I see you I understand why because you just have this yeah, but Thanks, man, man. Look, like at this hey, look he's just got the trench coat didn't look like this an hour ago <laughs> <laughs> listen we've got a, a minimum amount of time yes. with you and it's always appreciated and I love getting educated so let's jump straight sure in. obviously it's the season of uh, flu and sickness everybody gets hyped up about it but yeah. how important is it actually to stay on top of our general health and especially for our kids coming up to winter Ooh. yeah absolutely so I mean what happens is what you do on a day to day basis determines the ability of your immune system and your body to actually uh, fend off and fight against challenging infections. Okay. And in winter, we see a host of these coming up. We see, obviously, a lot of colds, a lot of different viruses and flu. We speak about COVID all the time and a lot of flu. And a respiratory tract, you know, so the nose, the ears, the throat, the chest. Those are a lot of common ones in winter. And the cold weather, obviously, uh, facilitates that because people then stay indoors and they crowd. And then they're coughing, sneezing on each other and really, really in close proximity due to the cold so that's why we see a surge of these infections over the winter time so keeping abreast of it means looking after your general health and well-being over this time including things like enough sleep eating correctly obviously staying active so that you can keep your body obviously at its optimum and then being ready to fight against these bugs when they do come. Mm. Nice, I like it's that. A, it's <laughs> also important to have this conversation because it is child protection week. So let's focus more on mm. the kids. When Good administrating uh, paracetamol, how important is that, especially during this mm. winter season right now? When it comes to drugs like paracetamol, uh, you must think about why we use it. So pain is the big reason, one of the big reasons, and fever. So a lot of people ask, what do I do when my child has pain and when they have fever? Paracetamol is one of the classes of drugs that we use in the medical field to attack fever and pain. Always good to have it uh, around in your house because of the fact that it doesn't make your children drowsy and make them pass out necessarily. And also because it has uh, very little side effects in terms of affecting other organs if given in the right dosage and 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 you know you follow the instructions carefully okay. so it's a safe drug to use generally and it's a, it's one that is quite important for pain for fever and in winter and in this time of the year obviously you see things like uh, obviously flu and so forth with body pain and muscle pain which is so. what i wanted to ask you about i mean obviously you're mentioning pain and fever but things like flu and some of those other symptoms is yes. it then okay to obviously take these um is something like paracetamol going to assist in this pro uh, problem yeah so it helps with the with uh, the symptoms of, of like inflammation and pain uh, specifically and then fever as well and then the good news as I mentioned is it doesn't cause side effects like an increased heart rate or okay. it doesn't burn the lining of your tummy as oh. some other classes of drugs that also work on fever uh, if you take them on an empty stomach yeah so that's where it comes into in, into play and I think that's why people need to understand the basic principles but most people give too little so you need to actually understand how to work out the dose of giving the right amount of paracetamol to your family member and as a guideline it's between 10 and 15 milligrams per kilogram so if you weigh 20 kilograms 10 times 20 is 200 milligrams and then you'll see that five moles of a syrup for example has 120 milligrams then you know you're gonna need probably about seven and a half to eight mils but on the on the the boxes and the, and the containers that contain the the the, the medication you'll be able to see the dosage guidelines per age group but remember weight is the most accurate and parents as a parent myself i think one of the biggest problems is we normally give too little and not enough 
Yeah. So check the weight of your child and work it out properly if you can. <laughs> Love, I'm trying to work out my weight now. I'm like, I'm trying to focus here. But that being said, you know, we always say prevention is better than cure. Can we administer pa paracetamol before anything uh, to maybe prevent them from feeling sore, getting colds, or getting headaches or pain? So I always tell people not to use it preventatively as a okay. prophylaxis because uh, people that drink alcohol, for example, and they go for a bubbleus, so they, they take the, the headache medication for the next day yeah. and what they don't know is the interaction of the alcohol with paracetamol with. can cause hepatitis or inflammation of the liver wow. so uh, generally you will use it when there's a clear medical indication to use it and you would use it and prescribe it you know when when you need the the pain treated or the fever treated yeah Mm. Absolutely love it, Doc. Always coming through with the good information. And I definitely learned a thing or two, especially when it comes to the quantities. Yes. That's something I didn't pick out. So, Mzanzia, hopefully you learned out something or two about this conversation. And it's always best to consult a healthcare professional like the Doc over here and to give you the information needed to take care of your children's health. Now, if you have any concerns or questions about your children's health, then you can contact your doctor and make sure that you do so. And uh, yes, prevention is better than cure. But in this case, make sure that you read the packaging. It's a specific dosage. A specific uh, recommendation in terms of how you should use it and of course it is the season coming up so make sure you just look after yourself and your health like you said get out there use your health and use all that food to preempt any of the issues that can come in winter doc thank you so much again it's always, always a good pleasure. seeing you ah. the suave dr the sexy dr Darren <laughs> Yo, you're good to me yeah. you're good to me <laughs> Being a parent can be challenging, but stepping out is when things get real complicated. That's why new Panado Pediatric Syrup 5 mil sachets are here to make the job easier. They're really convenient to pack and easy to use, so you're always prepared for pain and fever anytime, anywhere. Panado, a dose of care. Well, it's time for us to spend some time in the kitchen because teaching your kids to live a healthy lifestyle is very important. And this next recipe is packed full of goodness. Yes, bring the family, 100%. Your cousin's coming over. Get the crush and I'll get the ice. The whole family? More crush, mom? 100% refreshing, 100% goodness. Made with love by Clover. Now, whether you need 100% tasty, refreshing juice to kickstart your day or for lunch, there is a crush that ensures 100% goodness is always served. Now, it counts as one of your five a day, and it is packed with vitamin A, C, and D. And if you need a little inspiration of how you can get more goodness into your diet, we have Nondomiso here to show us a quick and easy crush plant power protein bowl. Yes. I love bowl food and this right. is looking incredible because it's all packed with plant power. Yes, I and think plant power lots and lots of based. nutrition. Yes, plant-based. It's <laughs> absolutely delicious. Okay, so we are making crispy tofu to start with. Ooh. Right? Isn't that yes. lovely? Okay, so we, we start off by sort of pat drying the tofu just to remove the excess liquid. And then we want to cover it up with this very um, We've prepared here some, some flour, which we've seasoned with some onion and garlic powder as well as paprika. And we then transfer that into an egg. Now, if you don't want to use eggs in your recipe, you could always use something like a mixture of some water and cornstarch. And that will work equally as great as a bit of a binding agent? Yes, as a binding agent, okay. And then, of course, we transfer that into the panko um, crumbs and we want to cover it nicely and of course if you want your your tofu to be extra crunchy you could repeat this process again Maybe just again okay <laughs> cool all right now what I love about tofu is its versatility and it takes on the flavor of mm. whatever you add to it hey isn't that just lovely that is nice because I know I'm seeing a lot of ingredients in front of me and I'm going to get started on our sauce yes. today. Yes, please so I've do. got some pineapple here that I'm going to add, chopped into teeny tiny pieces. Yes. Um, and of course, the key ingredient for this sauce is the crushed orange juice. There we which go. We absolutely love. So we are using our 100% fruit juice blend, our clover crush orange. Yeah. I'm going to add about half a cup. Yes, add about half a cup. And of course, you're going to be adding some mustard, some ginger, some lemon juice, honey, as well as those onions. So it's going to be nice and tangy in the end. Ooh, yes, we want tangy and also lots of ginger. It's always a great 
combination. Just, yeah, it just right? cuts through all the different, um, it just neutralizes things. For yes, me. yes. I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice. I wanted to mention, when you go buy your tofu, always be careful to buy firm tofu for this kind of recipe. I've sometimes made the mistake of buying silken tofu, which okay. then falls apart because it's too soft. Okay. Okay, so while you're preparing... I didn't um, know there were different types of tofu. <laughs> you're teaching me something new here. I just thought tofu was tofu. Yeah, I know. It's important to know these distinctions, okay? All right, so we're going to... I'm going to start assembling our bowl while you're busy preparing our sauce there. We've got some barley here. Now, if you're at home and you don't have barley, you could always use something like brown rice as an alternative. And we're going to okay. assemble this. Thank Add you. a little bit of that watered spinach, which we love. I made a teeny tiny blooper. Half our honey is outside, but it's okay. Okay, okay. Well, well, we'll work with it. Yes, always. Flex it up. Yeah. And we have our sauce. Yes. How delicious and creamy. And this is something that doesn't need to be over blended. It's great. Yeah. Ingredients. Okay, good. So I've assembled our bowl. I've got some spinach, some Ooh. butternut, some tomatoes, and I'm going to obviously add some of our yummy fresh avo, avo. Fresh avo. And I'm loving the colors I'm seeing on this. Yeah. But like the only thing I would also add is something yellow, maybe some corn. Ooh. Just, just to balance out the Ooh. color, but I think we'll get that yellowy color from our sauce. Yes. So we want to drizzle our sauce onto our dish. Oh, that's a bit much. Okay. Be careful with that. <laughs> careful with that. And then, of course, you dip it and you enjoy. Oh, this looks amazing, Nondomiso. I love this recipe you've showed us. You always come here with the best plant-based recipes. And if you want to get your hands on this crush plant power protein bowl, make sure you get to our website. That's expressoshow.com. Now, that is 100% amazing. I do want to taste it, if you don't mind. I need Please, to taste go ahead. your crispy tofu. Go ahead. I'm going to give it this one a little bit of a go. I think it's better if you just grab it and just bite into it. Just grab it and bite it. But yes. we need a little bit of the sauce, so yes, there we go. Yes, yes, mm. This is amazing. Right? Well, Good I'm definitely... substitute for chicken if you want to transition to a more plant-based diet. A great substitution. I wouldn't even have known I'm busy eating tofu here. I'm going to finish this off with my clover crush. And if you want to get this recipe, it is on our website, expressoshow.com. And if you've missed any of the steps, here is a quick re-look at it. qualified chef looking to pocket a whopping 15,000 Rand in cash and the title of Excella Young Chef for 2022, then listen up and enter now. Entry is easy. Simply follow the Excella Young Chef competition link on Afternoon Express's Facebook, Twitter or Instagram pages and upload a video of you sharing your name, a short intro about yourself, when and where you qualified and your signature Excella dish using Excella Thai long grain rice, sunflower oil or mayonnaise. Entries close on Friday the 3rd of June at midday. T's and C's do apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za.
Good Breakfast Show. And let us talk about the kids for a second. When it comes to kids, not all children master nighttime dryness at the same age. It's just the same as learning any new skill like walking or talking, for instance. Well, today marks World Bedwetting Day, and it is so important to remember that bedwetting is a common medical condition that can be treated. So this whole conversation is actually just to tell you that you're not alone. And we're going to go through the ins and outs with you. We're going to hold your hand throughout the entire process. So this particular thing, it can have a serious impact on a child's happiness, uh, which makes it important for parents to be equipped with the right information to assist uh, their child using practical techniques, management tools, and constant reassurance, which is vitally important in order to build their uh, child's self-confidence. Now, joining us today with uh, his first-hand experience is medical doctor and television executive producer and presenter, Dr. Michael Moll, to take us through this area that should not be of concern. Because the thing is, if you're concerned about something, all you need is the right information. Don't follow the auntie on Facebook. Follow Dr. Michael Moll. That's the most important thing. <laughs> it is so great to have you. Likewise, Carl. Jamie, good to be with you guys in the studio. And you're right, first-hand experience. I was a bedwetter, so I speak from that experience. Yes. But, Jamie, you did say something about it's like walking and talking and mastering bedwetting. No. Bedwetting is never a child's fault. It's not yeah. something they have control over. It's not because they want to wet their bed or they're being badly behaved. They have no control and therefore should never be punished for wetting the bed. Just want to put it out there. That's probably the most important point, Carl. You never punish a child Absolutely. for wetting the bed. And if you do, parents, I mean, 50% of parents are punishing their kids, you prolong the season of bedwetting. You make the effects of bedwetting, psychological effects, even worse. Yeah. So please never, ever punish your kids for bedwetting. Mm. And I love what you said, you know, you are not alone. Because 16% no. mm. of South African children is, is diagnosed with this bed wetting. Let's look at the long-term effects of this. How does this affect a child's self-esteem and overall, you know, emotional and mental well-being? Yeah, Jamie, you, you touched on the issue. Physically, it's a season that passes. Psychologically, one in six kids, I mean, five kids in every school class is wetting their bed, so you're not alone, as you said, Carl. Yeah. Uh, kids who wet their bed see themselves as of less value than their peers, all right? So my self-esteem is really knocked by the fact that I wet my bed for no good reason, because it's not your fault, kids. And secondly, kids that wet their beds are prone to uh, a higher risk of depression later on in life. So the mental effect of bedwetting is significant, and parents can really have a role to play in minimizing those effects. And I find that shame is such a big deterrent to kids having a fluid relationship with their parents because yeah. you're trying to hide this thing that I feel is wrong. But mm -hmm. if you as a parent go to the child and actually explain what had happened and actually go confront it, I feel like the shame factor, it, it gets removed. Suddenly, it's a safe place. Well, actually, Carl, shame is more parents' problem than a child's problem. Because a kid knows, I, I didn't do this on purpose. I mean, I wake up, my bed's wet. Ah, you know, yeah. I didn't want to do that. It's parents, my, my child's a bed wet. You know, I just, I can't tell the other parents. You know, little do they know, yes. five or six other parents in your class are battling with the same thing. So it's parental shame that's the bigger issue rather than child shame. And if parents could get around that and just realise it's a normal, natural part of growing up, uh, there's nothing wrong with your child, bedwetting doesn't need to be cured, or it's just a season you support your child through and you minimise the psychological effects, you'll sail through it. I feel like we should stay with the parents for a second and actually advise with regard to the incident, when, when it happens, when this thing is happening quite often, are there any sort of management tools that you could give parents so that they can actually confront this in the best way possible and not have that whole, my child's a bedwetter yeah. type of response, which is obviously very negative and is not going to help your child at all? Yeah, well, absolutely. Well, firstly, bedwetting is genetic. So, hey, yeah. mom and dad, you're to blame, <laughs> not your child. <laughs> Just putting it there out there. There we go. But there are two approaches. There's a, kind of a conservative approach, which is limiting fluids before bedtime yes. and voiding just before bed, you know, minimise salt and protein at dinner, that kind of stuff. The stuff that parents know. Yeah. Um, and if, you're, if your child is fine with that, great. But if you can see it's really affecting your child, uh, then I would be more proactive. There's bedwetting alarms. Expensive, take about three months to really work, effective in two-thirds of kids. Mm -hmm but worth doing, or there's actually medication. Go to your GP, get a medication, which is a, a hormone that tells your kidneys to stop producing that much urine at night, uh, which really assists your kid through the season. As soon as you stop taking medication, you go back to waiting in bed. So it's not a cure, it's support through the season. A bit like these pull-ups. 
I mean, these pull-ups are great because they're discreet, they're super absorbent, they're not nappies, they're just pull-ups. Uh, your children can go on sleep outs, they can have friends over because they know that whatever happens tomorrow morning, I'm not going to wake up in a wet bed because I have pull-ups on me. So again, just another, uh, another way to support your child through the season of bedwetting as they grow out of it. And most do. Something I wanted to ask is when do we go the medical route? When do we actually go and seek professional help? As parents, when, when do you feel like it's the right time to say, you know what, my child does have this condition, it's time now to go and seek professional help? Yeah, so Jamie, great question. If your conservative approach hasn't worked, your yeah. child is still bothered by that, and you need that medication, you've got to go see a GP. Over and above that, I would say that if your child was dry before, for at least six months, and starts wetting their bed again at night, you need to go see a doctor. There's, there's a psychological element there. It could be parental divorce, it could be a new sibling, it could be diabetes, a whole bunch of other things. And the third thing is if your child is having daytime accidents. So potty training and bedwetting, two very separate things, but if they start combining daytime issues, you know, and there's bedwetting, then go and see a doctor. Wow. I feel like we've been filled with information that is just vitally important. We know what the options are now with regard to the way we respond, which is so beautiful. And I think what we've provided here today is a lot of comfort, a lot of support, and a lot of key indicators when our response to what is a very natural thing mm -hmm. can become a negative response for our kids. So, Dr. Michael Moll, as always, you're a wealth of knowledge. We, we <laughs> Obviously, we go to you for everything, bedwetting, headaches, intermittent fasting. You <laughs> are the, the authority. So thank you once again for, for sharing. Thanks for having me in the studio, Carl. Jamie, great sharing. And parents, remember, never punish your kid for wetting their bed. Again, we are reiterating, it is so important to remember that bed wetting is a common condition in children and can even be experienced by teens and adults. Now listen up, one lucky viewer could win themselves a dry night's hamper to the value of 3,000 Rand. And it's gonna be so cool. I want you to enter this, okay? So to enter, just reply to the competition post on the Expresso Facebook or Twitter page and tell us why you would love to win this hamper. Don't forget to include hashtag dry nights in your answer. T's and C's apply and can be found on Expresso Show. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank Aww. you very much, Dr. Michael Moore. Really always such a good time, but also just spilling all of the deets and the information that we need. In fact, we asked you on our social media this morning, are you and your family getting the flu vaccine or are you boosting your immunity with any of the flu-fighting meds? That's right. So please share with us and use our WhatsApp voice note line. It's 063-408-8863. In fact, we have our first voice note. Yeah. This one's from George in Cape Town. Hey, Expresso, it's George here from Neisner. Hey, George. Uh, my family and I, um, every day we start the day with a tablespoon of honey, and on top of that we put some cinnamon, and it honestly just helps you throughout the day. Mm. So I hope that helps some people out there. I like that one. Mm. Thank you, George. Thank you. Mariki also weighed in. Uh, Mariki, what do you have to say? Good morning, Expresso Show. I'm Mariki from Bloemfontein, and I got the flu vaccine this year, but we boost our immune systems just by eating lots of grapefruit, mm. oranges, guavas, mm. and also ginger shots help really well. Thank you so much. Lots of vitamin oh, C, citrus stuff. fruits. It is the season. Yeah. It's so great to also capitalize on those fruits that is in season right now. Mm -hmm. Lindy was out in Josie. Good morning, team. Um, on my side, I really try to exercise like, as frequently as I can. Yeah. And I have lots of vitamin C um, fruits, like your oranges mm -hmm. and berries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the system clear and in check. Lindy. I love it for you. I love is it for you. Amazing. Well, if you would love to join in on that conversation, our WhatsApp line is open. That number is 063-408-8863. Send your voice notes through and we would love to hear your thoughts on how you are boosting your immune system as we yeah. head into the flu season. And the jab, the vaccine. Are we getting it, guys? Hey, it's the time. Please. Yeah. Peter Glucan. Hello, do you know what Peter Glucan is? What is Peter Glucan? No one knows what Peter Glucan is. Peter Glucan is a natural fiber in jungle oats that helps lower cholesterol and keep hearts well. Yes. Jungle, do life with heart.
to gut related issues they are always a little uncomfortable to discuss but they are also more common than you might think now many of us struggle with bloating and digestion and all types of stomach discomfort and we usually resort to writing it out instead of looking for a quick solution since quick solutions are hard to find now on the couch this morning we have Mignon Jordan from Mindful Eating Dietitian Consultancy and Piwo Mbunu Marketing Manager at Ascendus Pharma to discuss some of these gut related issues and possible solutions. I am here for the solutions. Ladies, it's great to have you here this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. <laughs> and then I'll start with you. What are some of the common causes that is related to our discomfort of our gut and gut related issues? Yeah, it's a very broad um, topic to discuss. Um, it's very individualized. Everyone's causes can be different, um, depending on the underlying um, health history, um, also genetics, it plays a big role as well. But usually it comes down to lifestyle. <laughs> so lifestyle plays a big role in how healthy your gut is. So if you consume a high amount of unhealthy fats like saturated fats, trans fats, processed foods, also sugary foods, um, those things can definitely affect your gut health um, but then also under training over training physical activity plays a big role as well and then also if you do have like an underlying diagnosis like IBS I think a lot of people have heard about that also celiac disease Crohn's disease those things also affect your gut health obviously because it's a gut related condition other than bloating what are some of the symptoms people can look out for to indicate that hey maybe you need to have a look at your gut health okay so symptoms could be anything like general abdominal pain, like usually if you have a tummy pain, it's usually at the upper part of your abdomen. Um, when it's a lower down pain, it's usually your intestine, so it can be anything from there. And then also heartburn. Heartburn is usually also a general thing a lot of people complain with, and they are not sure what it is, because it, can, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a burning sensation, it can also just be general pain. And then also um, things like nausea, vomiting even, if it gets at that severe point, diarrhea, constipation, all those discomfort feelings, um, that's usually the, the major symptoms you can present with here. Yeah. and maybe you can come in here. We've identified now that we are struggling with gut-related issues. You brought in Uni Enzyme, which is really saying that it's here to relieve discomfort. Tell us more about the product. Well, essentially, Uni Enzyme was formulated with all of those symptoms that Mignon mentioned in mind. Um, specifically, if you look at our culture in South Africa, we very much a a culture that's orientated around food, indulgence, and again, lifestyle is a big contributor to a lot of the symptoms that Mignon mentioned as well. So Uni Enzyme in essence is essentially a digestive enzyme that was created to help support your digestive daily gut health. And the benefit of it is that it comes as a one a day tablet that you can take to essentially help you in terms of managing those symptoms as mentioned, like your indigestion, your bloating, bulging, flatulence, and also your general stomach discomfort or that feeling of fullness, mm -hmm. especially after having overindulged. What are some of the changes we can make? Because I've, I've noticed if I pay attention to the foods I eat, when I eat a, a drink a specific instant coffee with an apple, that causes me to bloat. But I know a lot of people don't always keep track of what they're eating. Yeah, it's very hard because um, you, you must always individualize the advice you give to a person. Um, so usually my approach will always be to to try and get a person to keep like a diary. <laughs> I think I think not a lot of people have time to do that, but it's 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 nice to know and understand your gut. So if you keep a diary of what foods usually makes you feel uncomfortable, that will help yourself and the professional that's helping you a lot. Um, but also like sometimes there's a build up, like it could be one food item that bloats you one time, and then the next time you eat it, it doesn't cause any discomfort. But it's usually like, maybe a combination of different food items or the amount that you're having. So it could be um, the volume and then the buildup. Okay. That is so important to mention because for the longest time I used to think that I was allergic to like rice and pasta yeah. just based off thinking that I was bloated but I wasn't taking care of my gut health. But this is where Uni Enzyme aids in this. What is the core belief of this product? 
So essentially Uni Enzyme is a product that contains five unique ingredients inside it and all of them natural um, in terms of helping you in terms of managing those symptoms. Essentially it contains two digestive enzymes, the first one being your papain, which is essentially a proteolytic enzyme that helps with the breaking down of proteins into smaller uh, fragments so that it's better digestive, digested inside the body. And then the second one is your alpha amylase, which is another digestive enzyme. And what that does, it actually helps with the digestion of your carbs or starches, as you've mentioned now as well. And then further and above that, we also have semetocone, and that essentially is an antiflatulant that helps with that gastrointestinal gas that often leads to you feeling like bloated and gassy as well. And then, because it continues, we also have your nicotinamide inside. And essentially what nicotinamide does is that it actually helps your body metabolize your carbohydrates, your proteins, and also your fats. And then I think a lot of people are quite familiar with your activated charcoal, mm. which Uni Enzyme also has. And essentially what charcoal does is that it helps trap the toxins inside your gut and then for preventing them from being absorbed in the body. So all of those work synergistically to ultimately manage some of those symptoms that we've been talking about uh, during the segment. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, Piwa, thank you for joining us. Mignon, it's great having both of you here. And of course, we want to take our gut health seriously. And gut issues do not have to be a life sentence. And some simple dietary changes can actually end up making a huge impact on your gut health as well as your overall health. Now, if you would like more information, simply visit unienzyme.co.za or your nearest pharmacy to find out more. Uh, welcome back to the kitchen. It's time to fill those bellies with something good. And if you are looking for a fun way to turn your canned tuna into a tasty dish, well, then I've got something for you. Listen to this. These are crispy jalapeno tuna fritters, and they are so quick and so easy to make. And then we're also adding a touch of mayo, which keeps these tuna fritters tender on the inside, while the nuts about cooking coconut oil leaves them crunchy and delicious on the outside. And I hear the show us how is the beautiful Nondo Miso in the building, and it's going to be something that's also budget-friendly too, so pay attention, Mzandi. And uh, wow, you're looking good this morning, Nondi. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you. I'm wonderful. <laughs> I love I'm all the happy. pink. It's just got this perfect ambiance. Yes. It's warm, it's perfect for winter as well. Yes, so, yes, all yes. To you. Yeah, yeah, thank you for noticing. <laughs> I, did, I did try and match my hair today. <laughs> but I see we also got more colors, and it's not just you that you're coming through with the rainbow. We've got lots of colors in these ingredients, which I absolutely love. Yeah. Talk me through it. What's happening? Okay, so we're using tuna, as you said, today. Yeah. And I love this recipe because it's so versatile. So if you are plant based and you don't want to use tuna, you could substitute it with something like a grated potato, for example. Okay, which could okay, be so that's lovely. Interesting. So we're going to add some onions to our tuna, as well as some mayo and um, some spring onions and some jalapeno as you've already mentioned. Okay, now we want to mix these ingredients until they're well incorporated, right. obviously. And yeah, then we're going to add the rest of our ingredients once we've mixed them up, okay? Yum, it really looks so fresh. It really looks like something that you could chow into and uh, it's not even done yet. Yeah, it's <laughs> not even done. Okay, so well, after that, we're going to add our chickpea flour okay. as well as our parsley, some um, egg. And again, if you don't eat eggs, you could use something like flax egg, which you make by mixing or combining some water okay. as well as some flax powder. So does that act as like your binder, binder. in you placing the egg? Yes, oh, yes, nice. yes. Okay. Yes. I like the fact that you're providing us with some alternatives as well, which is really great because I know obviously not everybody is into meat or eats seafood as well. So at the same time, this is great because anybody can literally make this, which I love. Yeah, and I think it's important to provide alternatives because people have diff different medical conditions. You know, yes. as somebody with irritable bowel syndrome, I'm always so, so aware and cognizant of the fact that not everybody can eat the same kinds of foods. So, so it cool. helps to know the different, the different alternatives that you could use. I like that. And of course, it is Health Tuesday, so we are choosing to give you some more advice and some more tips like these ones right here, which I absolutely love. Always got options. All right, yeah. it's looking good. It's looking like it's come together quite nicely. Am I going to be doing anything of you? Yeah, yes, please. Can you prepare, prepare the dip for us? Oh, okay. yes. Okay, what do we got, by the way? We've what got some ingredients? Greek yogurt, some lemon juice, some coriander, as well as some garlic, which yeah, we're going to mix together. I and you. I am now going to be... I've heated up a, a pan already. Okay. And 
to the pan, I'm going to add our very delicious coconut oil, which is from the Nuts About You Nuts cooking. About Cooking. Yeah. I absolutely love this stuff. We've been uh, recently using it quite a bit in our recipes, and uh, Mzanzi, let me tell you, it is absolute magic. Now, Nuts About Cooking coconut oil is 100% uh, vegan, right? It's fully refined, it's odorless coconut oil, and it also contains all the benefits of coconut oil with a neutral taste. So that means it's good for cooking, right? So it's yeah. incredible, it's naturally saturated fat, and it gives you a firm texture at cold or room temperatures and it's also ideal like I just mentioned now for what we're doing and that's baking as well as high heat cooking because it gives your dish that perfect crisp which we're hoping to replicate right now and uh, like I said it's something that I mean you know what I know this sounds crazy but I've even in emergencies used this just like on my skin just to nourish it because coconut yeah. is so good for not only on the inside but the outside too so it's like a like a, a weird little remedy for everything I mean if you know that it's something that works on your skin as well well, imagine how good it's working on the inside, right? Yes, yes. And the lovely thing is that, of course, your skin absorbs everything you put on it. Well, not everything, but of course, it's nice to put something like coconut oil because they generally say if you can't eat it, then maybe don't put it on your skin. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so since we can consume coconut oil, it's also lovely to just put it on our skin. 100%. Our skin absorbs it and, yeah. So we want to form uh, round patties with our, our tuna mix here. Yeah. And, of course, we then fry those for about three minutes yeah. on each side until they're golden. And brown. I like that. Okay. It's almost and like back in the day, I don't know if you ever heard the term, but we used to make like fricadels. And if you heard oh, of a fricadel, yes, it's kind of yes. it's kind of giving me that nostalgic yes. feel of a fricadel. Yes, it's yes, like yes, yes. a patty, but with a lot of loving and a lot of good stuff, which yes. is essentially what we got right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to make one more. But of course, if you're at home and you've got a bit more time, you could always prepare these in a, a in a nice mold. And of course, you're going to get a nice, beautiful shape like the one that we have there. Absolutely love it. Okay. Thank you so much, Nondumiso. I'm loving this, and of course, I've got your uh, topping or what we call it, the dip, yes. which is pretty simple and really easy to make. And look at that having so much fun in the kitchen in no time whatsoever and if you are looking to take control of your life too your weight as well as transform your mind then the nuts about cooking 21 day health reboot is definitely for you now basically what it is it's a health reset challenge that serves as a platform to guide mentor and assist positive lifestyle change now you can sign up by purchasing an NAC coconut oil tub and fill in a sign up form and then upload your till slip to confirm your entry on the nuts about cooking website now for this recipe of course don't worry, we got you covered as well because I know there's a lot to take in, but you can head over to expressoshow.com right now. All the inspiration is there. And of course, if you were listening, then there's all great alternatives. If you are not into meat or are looking at a meat-free alternative, then again, Mzanzi, don't worry. It looks incredible. I must say, we've done a good job in the kitchen, right? Yeah, we have. <laughs> <laughs> and fast forward to the future and you've got something delicious like that. But Mzanzi, if you have not been paying attention, shame on you, but don't worry. We got you covered <laughs> because yeah, you have a recipe recap. Enjoy. <laughs>
Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. Now, this quote, we only have one chance at being young that is more valuable than anything. Enjoy every single moment as much as you possibly can. Well, those are the words of singer-songwriter Werner Becker, whose latest single, Side of the Wild, speaks empathic empathically about his frustrations and fears around life, love, and growing up. And here's a little snippet of his talent. It's that deep expressiveness for me where you go so deep in and I've got to love it. Berna Becker, welcome to the Expresso <laughs> Show. Let's give it up for Berna, everybody. Amazing. Hey. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Welcome. It's so good to have you here, <laughs> yes, man. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. And I know that your voice is really going to just go straight for the heart. <laughs> uh, but I know that you are a full-time musician. Yes. Uh, eight years of experience. In fact, more than eight years. Uh, you know, composition, performance, teaching, music. This journey has been a combination of so many things. Where did it all begin for you? Uh, so my dad was actually a musician as well for a couple of years uh, when I was growing up. And so uh, we got to tour with him throughout the country and uh, see a lot of the arts festivals and sort of grow up around that industry. And I think that's really what sparked uh, a love for music inside me. You know? uh, it was and, at home. And I love that quote, speaking about growing up, I think a lot of us, I don't know, about you, Tubsy, but I'm speaking definitely for myself, we have this fear of not necessarily growing up, but being a grown-up and yeah. being an adult, because adulting is hard. What What is it about that, um, that song that really hits home for you? Um, so to me, uh, Side of the Wild is, is really about uh, discovering uh, new things in your life and open uh, using your arms open, wide open, uh, just to, to embrace them and uh, not be afraid. Sort of plunge your head in first and see what comes next. <laughs> be an adult. Uh, and would you say that's the same approach? Approach you sort of applied to making your music sort of just plunging in and experimenting with the sound and finding what that looks like or do you just kind of like have a set style and tone that you just never deviate from so so in the in the new uh, EP that I'm bringing out this year I, I'm exploring some new sounds um, and uh, going a new direction that I've never done before and I find that because I'm sort of closer to 30 now I'm starting to experience life in a more mature way and uh, that has helped me see that it's not all dark and dingy and um, there are beautiful things in this life. Yeah, well. they're, they're really, <laughs> it's not just dark and dingy on our side of the world at the 30s, trust me. It really is beautiful. Now, do you find making that shift, that change in your music style and direction, was that something that was easy for you or did it take a little bit of work? So it definitely took a bit of work, but it, it comes very unconsciously, right? It's sort of a subconscious thing that happens happens, you're not uh, ac actually actively sitting there and thinking, I want to write the song this way, or at least not in my case. Um, usually when I write a song, it sort of comes very naturally. And then you can sort of mold it slightly afterwards and see where you want to take it, a bit more to a happy-go-lucky direction or something more darker or, or, or um, a bit more emotional. Side of the Wild, it's the first single out of this brand new EP. Mm -hmm. It's all the anticipation, we're excited about it. Please just paint the picture of what this story is all about and how it's going to just unfold. Yes, yeah, so uh, this whole album that I'm releasing is uh, basically about my quarter-life crisis. Mm. Um, <laughs> I feel like more and more people are experiencing that in their mid uh, to late 20s. And uh, Side of the Wild is sort of one of those songs where you realize that uh, even though things might they, seem yeah. very hard and uh, you might feel like you have to be somewhere in your life because you see your peers, you see that they are achieving things that you might ne not necessarily be achieving, uh, you have to trust the, the, the 
the universe and uh, just go with the flow, eventually your time will come. Mm. <laughs> That's so true because I think a lot of us tend to compare where we at and that was something that was quite difficult because not everyone took a gap year. Some mm. people went to go study. We, you know, the minute you leave school, everyone goes at their own yeah. pace mm. in their own directions and I think sometimes we forget that. So yeah. thank you for that reminder. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And I think it's just knowing that life is a journey and not a destination. Our job is to enjoy the ride but be part of creating that mm. ride. Exactly. Well, Werner Becker is in the house and we're going to be riding with him all throughout the morning here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. We want you to get your cell phones out because you're going to be needing to comment, letting us know what you think of his brand new sound and his EP that's out, Side of the Wild. I oh, love that one. Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. You will use the hashtag Expresso Show. Welcome, Werner. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Well, time now, one minute before 8 o'clock, time to have a final look at those news headlines. Starting on the local front, figures released by the National Institute for Communicable Diseases, the NICD, on Monday showed that there were 1,004 new COVID-19 cases that had been identified in South Africa in the previous 24 hours. Now, this brings the total number of laboratory-confirmed cases since the start of the pandemic to 3,954,971. The NICD said this increase represented a 9.4% positivity rate. The health department reported another 16 deaths, four of which occurred in the past 24 to 48 hours, and 43% of the new cases are from Gauteng. Then a 45-year-old man was sentenced to an effective 28 years in prison on Monday after being convicted of conspiracy to hunt rhino, two counts of hunting and killing protected species, and one count of hunting without a permit. The Mpangeni Regional Court in KZN sentenced Michael Masuku for incidents that took place in the Shlushluwe Umfolozi Game Reserve in October 2018. Now, a state witness gave evidence linking Masuku directly to the crimes, especially the shooting of a white and black rhino. Then looking to news on the international front, a new UK visa scheme that is designed to attract the brightest and best graduates from around the world does not include any African universities on its list of institutions where those degree holders can come from. Now this has led to complaints that African talent is being excluded, though Africans who have attended the listed universities will be able to apply. The UK scheme will be available to alumni of the top non-UK universities who graduated in the past five years. Then one of England's most well-known historic landmarks, the Stonehenge, has been included in the celebration of the reign of Queen Elizabeth with a projection of eight portraits of the monarch on its stones ahead of the highly anticipated Platinum Jubilee weekend. Now the same will be done on the marble arch as well. The projections are meant to reflect the 96-year-old monarch across each of the decades of her reign, including the one starting right now. Now Queen Elizabeth's 70th Jubilee begins on the 2nd of June with a true of the colour, an annual spectacular military parade for her birthday. And if you're one of that champion cats above dogs, you're really not going to like slash believe the following story. Now, this is because a wee dog in Australia, a Jack Russell, has learned to drive and helps her boss on a huge farm in Victoria. Now, Lexi fancies herself a sheep herder, but actually she's much more, the reason being that her boss, Cameron Jack, has taught her to drive and she helps out big time. Now, after a leg injury, Lexi stopped herding, then Cameron decided to teach her how to drive. Nowadays, for example, when Cameron has to drop off hay, he puts the truck in first gear and leaves Lexi at the wheel. As she steers, he's doing his job on the back of the truck as well. Now, while it would be easy to shrug off Lexi's driving as no more than her sitting propped up behind the wheel of a slow-moving truck, Cameron's convinced that he's been successful in teaching her how to drive. And who are we to argue? Cameron concludes saying Lexi doesn't have her license yet. Remember, she is just a dog. On that note, that is where I wrap up your news headlines here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's time to have a final look at the sports. Yes, to be so.
Yes, yeah, surprise, it's me, don't worry, Jamie Lee Domberg, I got you covered and I thought I'd bring you one last look when it comes to the sport report this morning. Of course, in sticking to soccer, first up, the uh, CAF Confederation now, Zuhir Aral Mutaraji was the two-goal star as Wydad Casablanca defeated Egyptian outfit Al Ali 2-0 to win the CAF for the CAF Champions League and complete a Moroccan club double in Africa this season. Now, Renaissance Perkane won the second-tier CAF Confederation Cup on May the 20th and will face Wydad for the CAF Super Cup. Now, it was the third time Wydad have conquered Africa, winning in 1992 and 2017. And the second triumph also came against Ali. Now, it was also a disappointing outcome for South African-born Ali coach Pizzo Motsumane, who had hoped to become the first coach to win the Premier African Club competition for three consecutive times. Well, sticking to our soccer news now and heading over to Europe and reporting on Chelsea, where their 4.25 Million pound sale to a consortium led by American investor Todd Booley and private equity firm Clear Lake Capital has been completed. Now, the club was put up for sale in March before previous owner Roman Abramovich was sanctioned over his links to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now, Chelsea had been operating under a special government license which would have expired on the 31st of May. Now, Booley said that he was honored and, quote, wanted to make fans proud, unquote. Now, the consortium fought off 11 serious rivals to become the new owners in a sale process that started on the 2nd of March and comprised more than 250 inquiries. While well, we leave you from uh, soccer news, heading over to tennis action now and teenage sensation Holger Rune outmuscled world number four and last year's French Open finalist Stefanos Tsitsipas 7-5, 3-6, 6-3 and 6-4 to move into the quarterfinals of the French Open. Now the Dane joins fellow 19-year-old Carlos Alcades of Spain in the last eight and the first time two teenagers have made that stage at a Grand Slam since 1994. Now, second seed Daniel Medvedev was also another shock exit at Roland Garros after losing 6-2, 6-3 and 6-2 to Marin Cilic. Now, in the women's draw, Igor Swiatek equaled the third best winning streak this century after beating Zheng Jingwen 6-7, 6-0 and 6-2 respectively. Now, 11 seed Jessica Pagula fought back to defeat 63rd ranked Irina Kabilia Begu, 4 6, 6 2, and 6 3, and this to reach the quarterfinals for the very first time. Now, sticking to our latest in sport action, we head over to the cricket news now, and Trent Bolt and Henry Nichols may miss New Zealand's first test against England despite being named in the squad for the clash starting at Lords on Thursday. Now, Bolt played in the Indian Premier League final for Rajasthan Royals on Sunday and is unlikely to recover in time for five days of test cricket. Now, Nichols has had a disrupted start to the tour. England due to injury problems and a bout of coronavirus. Well, that's all the action that we have when it comes to sport. Well, I leave you right now with Tabisa Makubela. It is now his turn to obviously deliver us with the latest when it comes to the weather. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Damone, a final look at your weather. Now, in the wake of recent reports that this year would see more hurricanes than before comes the news that Hurricane Agatha was barreling towards southern Mexico's Pacific coast yesterday morning, threatening to dump torrential rains on beached resorts in the uh, state of Oaxaca and a Category 2 storm and the first hurricane to form in the eastern Pacific this year. Agatha was blowing maximum sustained winds of 177 kilometers per hour, the Miami-based National Hurricane Center said. Authorities have set up some 200 shelters along the coastal region of Axaca with uh, capacity to shelter about 26,000 people. Now, this hurricane is expected to dump 25 to 41 centimeters of rain on that particular area and up to 50 centimeters in some areas, which could spark lethal flash flooding and mudslides. Now, it is unlikely to change in strength much before reaching land and should then weaken rapidly as it dissipates over southeastern Mexico later today. Whew, they're going to have to brace themselves for that one. I hope that everyone is safe in that region. Now, from weather news, we move on to the sunrise images captured by you, our gorgeous and talented viewers. Regular photographer Pat Sunkel from Durban captured this early morning shot of the sun beginning to rise from behind the mountains. Then we got one from Miranda Kelly from Westbrook who shared in this beautiful silhouetted sh shot uh, looking towards the ocean as the sun rises with hues of orange and purple lighting up the sky. I mean, look at how beautiful that is. It's stunning. Regular photographer 
photographer Nancy Gavinder from Park Reni, uh, or Reni, I captured this breathtaking shot of the sunrise rising between the cloud-filled sky. It is also equally as stunning. Jolene from East London headed to the beach early this morning. Oh, what a life to capture this phenomenal view of the sun rising over the fresh waves. Thank you so much for sharing those pictures. We do it again bright and early tomorrow. And now time for a final look at those temperatures. Sun and clouds for you, Bulukwani 3, as your low reaching a high of 30, uh, 20, with Mbombela coming in with um, some sun and clouds today. 7 is your low, reaching a high of 26. If you find yourself out in the capital city, that's for you, Pretoria. It's a sunny day for you today. 4 is your low, reaching a high of 18. Sunny times for Johannesburg. Josie Maboning, 3 is your low, reaching a high of 15 with some sun expected out in Mahike today, one reaching a high of 19. Clerk stop starts off at minus one, peaking at 17, with Kimberley coming in also at minus one, your minimum reaching a high of 16. Sunny times for Bloemfontein, uh, minus four is your low, reaching a maximum of 16. With Richards Bay, a break from the uh, rain uh, today, you've got some sun, nine reaching a high of 21. Peter Maritz, big three and 19, with some sun out in Durban, 10, reaching a high of 21. Artinum Tata, three is your low, reaching a high of 18. And if you find yourself out in East London today, 10, 10, yes, 10 over 10, 10 minimum, 10 maximum. And Craddock minus two, reaching a high of 16. Quebecha, rainy times, nine, reaching a high of 18. With George coming in with some sun and clouds, uh, your temperatures are eight, peaking at 19. If you are out in East London, rather, your temperatures are 10 and reaching a 19 high, not 10 over 10. Uh, Cape Town, that's the mother city 10 is your low reaching a high of 18 and if you're out in Wooster today you can expect a low of three reaching a high of 19. Sutherland zero that's where you start off today and you will peak at 14 with Uppington also coming in at a low of zero and peaking at a high of 20. Well listen it's a Tuesday Tuesday. You know what we do. We choose to be on the feel-good side of life, no matter what the weather's looking like in our part of the country. And hopefully this bit of music sets you up just for that. Oh, well, listen, it definitely will. Werner Becker is on your Feel Good Breakfast show, and he's here to perform his first performance this morning. And this one is called Run. Take it away. Taking God is here for me And put on your shoes, little one Don't you see what you've done You dipped your finger in the pan When none of it was yours, little man your finger in the pan when none of it was yours, little man. You see, sensitive boys are to find these days. No one of them, I know one of them, and out here alone, I'm getting lonely each day. But I know I'm not him, I know I'm not him. I'm Can I?
feel good breakfast show. You're like an all in one man band. What a phenomenal performance. He's here to stay on your feel good breakfast show with another one, so don't go anywhere. It's time to meet one of our Tropica Island of Treasure All Stars. My name is Maurice Spades, and I am an actor. How do I prepare myself for this season? I'm basically going to stay neutral and stay more calm. So I'm doing more mind focus and calming of the soul than anything else. Hiking is one of the things because I am a bush lighty. I like to connect with nature. Everything is smooth, quiet. I'm not going to put any stress on myself, no pressure on myself. I'm looking forward to have fun. It's definitely going to be, uh, going to be competitive. If you're going to be my partner, definitely I have to swim. And a very, very strong puzzle player. <laughs> Come prepared, my brother, or my sister. Come prepared. Ever since season seven, who would have thought they would give us like a bear tortoise and you would know what this thing would eat. So it was a guessing game and other teams, they guess it right, you know, I guess. I've learned from my mistakes. I don't like a tortoise because I think that stood in my way between my million rand and become a champion, a winner of season seven. But also at the same time, I'm grateful for my second shot for winning that one million rand. You know what, I know you're gonna come ready. I know you guys are ready. But guess what? We're all gonna play on the island. Do you think this is a game? I'm not scared. Want to compete with this awesome all-star? Then audition for Tropica Island of Treasure season 10. Send your name to our WhatsApp and follow the link or upload your audition video on socials, tagging at MyTropica and hashtag Tropica for your chance to get a spot on the island. Buy a Tropica today and it could be you. Tropica, nothing smoother.
one in two healthy South African women suffer from iron deficiency. Speak to your healthcare professional about getting tested and treated for iron deficiency. Brought to you by Ferrymed. It's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, I'm Zanzi. Welcome back. Your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And of course, it is Tuesday and it is Health Tuesday. And we're spending to spend it with you. Well, choosing to spend it with you, sorry. And of course, we all know that our diet is one of the single most significant aspects of our lives. And it can positively affect our bodies, our health, and even our mental health. But with the vast amount of information and misinformation out there in the world, knowing how and where to start can be so overwhelming. But luckily, the team at Tiger Brands have put all their brilliant minds and hearts into a solution that can absolutely absolutely help us all. Check this out. <laughs> two years, there has been a massive shift in the way that we see our health and South Africans are now seeking for more affordable and accessible ways to make healthier decisions when it comes to food. I'm here today at Tiger Brands Eat Well, Live Well launch where we are all going to be served with a new and delicious way to do just that. Tracy, firstly, thank you so much for having the Expresso team here today. What an insightful conversation. Tell us more about Eat Well, Live Well. What is the mission and intention behind the book? Gokhle, the mission is huge, way bigger than we can actually do right now, but at least we've started. It is about taking technical dietary information and distilling it into easy to understand info guides. Why are these guides so important, particularly for South Africa? Our country is beautiful, but we're also an unhealthy country. Um, there was an international report that actually ranked us one of the most unhealthiest countries in the world, can you believe? And we believe it's because they actually don't have access to the right information. So we know that in South Africa we have hidden hunger, we have malnutrition, we have obesity, we've got this triple burden of disease and we, we need to start making shifts in the way we eat but we need to have, fill that knowledge gap and help all South Africans have access to information that will change their, their daily nutrient intake. Healthier changes don't have to be drastic ones. Sometimes it's the smallest and consistent changes that reap the biggest results. Arthur, it is so great to reconnect with you once again. It seems like every day entire food groups are being cancelled, diets come and go. Why has food become so complicated? Because we listen to a lot of messages both on social media, on, on TV, and the reality is that we need to take it back to the basics. Just understanding that you know all the food groups that we have are there for a reason to nourish us so that we can be able to be the best that we need to be in life. I think one of the biggest misconceptions about healthy eating and what I've learned today is uh, the generalized approach we have towards the information that we take in. So for example, looking at diet, culture, etc. We always look at what works for one person. We take it at face value. We look at their before and after and we think to ourselves, this will work for us. When essentially your DNA composition um, is very different to somebody else's, you would have to tailor make what you take in in order to fit your body type, your lifestyle and what your body essentially needs. piece of advice always is get the good stuff in. If we look at the plates in the guide, it shows you that half of the plate should be vegetables, a quarter should be whole grain, high fiber carbohydrates, and a portion of lean protein. And if, if you're one starting point, just start getting more vegetables on your plate. It doesn't matter if it's canned or frozen, just start eating more veggies, get the good stuff in. So our perception of portion sizes has been distorted over the years. We have larger portion sizes. So really the guide is there to be able to offer us, you know, simple ways and practical ways on how we can be able to make portion sizes and portion uh, control more intuitive for everyone. And usually with portion control, I assume that if I portion more protein to carbs, I'm healthier. Whereas vegetables are very important. It has to be half your plate and that substitute is very interesting because not all of us know that. It's more about sustaining your energy levels to get through a workout, to get through your day, and to feel like a human being. I often 
think that to be healthy, it's very expensive. That's such a big misconception out there. But if it, it does become expensive when your portion of chicken is this big instead of this big. And if you put portion controlling on the more expensive food items and you're putting more veggies on your plate, that would actually probably cost you a little bit less. Well, Live Well guides are easily accessible and they're downloadable as PDFs. You can print them out, stick them up on your fridge and they're all available on our website. I learned today it doesn't have to be complicated. Get back to the basics and eat more real fresh food, practice portion control and keep your body moving. And most importantly, enjoy what you eat because when you eat well, you will live well. Absolutely love it. How perfect is that a guide on all things when it comes to healthy eating? And I think for all of us, we could do with some more of that information and being educated, especially when it comes to getting the good nutrition into our body. And speaking of nutrition, one thing that's quite important is calcium. And I think we all could do with a little bit more of that. Let's go get some. <laughs> Thank you, Raul. Well, you know what? It is time to make your mornings marvelous with Super M. So today we are inspiring you with a Super M morning shake up to wake up. And this is inspired by one of our awesome viewers, Belinda Francis, who commented on the Expresso Facebook page and simply said the super way to start my morning. Hashtag Super M. Now, Belinda, we could not agree any more with you. This one is for you. So if everyone has, you know, their preferred morning beverage whether you love your coffee or you add your super m to the mix it gets even better now jamie yes. and tabiso in front of you are some ingredients to really inspire you to make your Ta -da -da. best super m wake up drink okay. and you only have 60 seconds to do so why so do you I always see... give us such little time because 60 it's seconds. <laughs> you know the mornings are quick quick time it's on the go. Precious. okay you don't so have you've a lot got of time. granola you've got mm. fresh fruit banana mm. some mm. oranges as well as some uh, winter melon um winter spanspec we've got our different super m flavors so i'm going to put the timer on okay and let's see how quickly and creative you guys can get yeah. are you okay. ready yes. yes for sure well, let's get that timer going in three two one, let's go. My day doesn't start without a My cup of coffee. Starts with this is how your day starts, see, everybody. Oh, so. I'm best. You understand why? So. Mine starts you with have 50, a super air three vanilla seconds left. That's all I'm saying. So I'm starting off some So coffee. you're adding some coffee. Coffee, yes. And then we're going to mix some chocolate with it. So I'm going in with my super M Ooh. chocolate. And that's just going to melt into this. I'm going in with some granola yeah. after we've done Jamie, some super M vanilla. Because instead of milk, you're now using your super, super M, M as the milk for your coffee. And I don't need to add any sweetness to it and what I'm gonna That's do is just is keeping it nice and basic for this one I'm gonna crash crash too much talking this. less doing I don't understand well you're listen explaining. you've got 24 <laughs> seconds you have to you. We'll clean that up as well so uh, go 20 am seconds am I allowed to oh, have some of your cinnamon nuts. please because mine's gone oh he spilled all his cinnamon okay you guys have 10 seconds left nine mm. eight seven six five four Three, two, one, and... You're my coffee that you need in the morning. And the granola that I know that'll serve me. Shame, actually, Talk me through choosing. your drink. <laughs> look at, like, look at, it looks yeah, it's like, like an aesthetic. Instagram post. Yes! For the aesthetic, <laughs> like everybody. Like Chef Clem, I've seen him do <laughs> stuff like this. Just Is this. that food styling? It's food styling, that's what we call it. Nicole Snelling taught me this. Okay, she wow. is our kitchen fairy. Okay, mm. quickly, uh, Jamie Lee, talk me through okay. your Super M morning wake-up drink. Kept it very simple. I use, uh, you know, coffee because I love to start my day with coffee mm. and then added that Super M chocolate to it. Not only mm. does it add the milk to it, but also just the flavor of chocolate coffee. I mean, what could be better than that? And just to, you know, end it off with a nice little crunch, I put some granola on the top. You'll find <laughs> a bit of pieces in there. And I mean, what can be said then, then have yourself a Super M kind of day? And you, you How added I... the banana as a little umbrella. What's this nice banana touch? story now? She's pretty, man. <laughs> she's pretty. And look, she's even floating and you can take her out. You you can eat it. It's like sexy. Okay. <laughs> Tabsy, talk me through your hey, granola. Man. Are you proud of that? I, listen, I'll put my face on this. I'll put my face on this. 
<laughs> okay, well. Tapsi, yours look very creative. Mine does certainly look creative, and that's because it was made creatively with love and a creative inspiration. I <laughs> think that we understand that bananas are, all of the hype at the moment, they are in season, which means that you want to make sure that you capitalize on that. Bananas are good because as a gymming person, what I've come to learn is that they So did you just say he's a gymming you. person? <laughs> As a gymming person, I know that bananas Ooh. sustain you and they give you protein. Oh, but protein in bananas? <laughs> what protein? What bananas? Don't ask questions. <laughs> There's nuts as well which give you protein there. And what I've done is I've added my Super Am vanilla flavor there and some cinnamon just to give it a punch of flavor. It's about neutralizing everything but giving it a punch. Okay, well, it's all about the punch. Well, there you have it. These are our wake up, feel good breakfast show smoothies. Ooh. Head on over to our socials and mm. let us know how you wake up with your Super M and remember to please tag us at Super M underscore essay in your comments. And if you have a favorite between the two, you are welcome to also leave the comment with who has the best wake up Super M smoothie. Mm. Mm. What gym is this that you go to? Tell us. <laughs> oh, gym. What? Oh, it's going to be a hot day in the big city. Super M. Anytime. Gap filler. Made with love by Clover. I can make my day. Join Expresso with this autumn for a chance to win one of six Plascon vouchers each to the value of 5,000 Rand. With nature's own forests, fields and beaches inspiring Plascon's new colour combinations, tell us how you would colour your life. Answer our weekly social media question and find the terms and conditions on expressoshow.com. So, colour your life with 5,000 Rand Plascon paint vouchers to be won this autumn on Expresso. Breakfast is served. It is your feel-good breakfast show. It's Espresso. We're live here on S3. Now, ladies and gents, we are back with another grilling round of the Philo's Challenge. We've got our very own uh, Jamie Lee Domberg going up against Mr. Becker, our guest this morning. Uh, they're going 
against each other playing to win a box of the brand new Jungle Crunch a lot fillers. They are fantastic. Yesterday I got to win the chocolate flavor. The stakes are high. They've been raised. These things are a hit at the moment. Everybody wants their hands on them. They want to be eating this. Looks okay? amazing. Mm, <laughs> it does look amazing. I'm in fact having the uh, strawberry flavored ones amongst my favorite because yesterday I finished the chocolate box that I won. Of course so I did. So I had to <laughs> redeem myself. I went to a store and organized some strawberry ones. But this is how it works. These guys are going to be blindfolded and then using their spoons they'll need to simply scoop up these cotton balls these ones here, and then follow your bowl, guys. You've got bowls in front of you and big spoons. Do you see them? Yes. Watch, look closely, <laughs> make sure that you see them. You have 30 seconds on the clock, and then whoever has the fullest bowl is the winner. It's pretty easy. But here's the trick. Yes, I did say you are going to have to be blindfolded, so you won't see what's going on in the mix. Are you ready for that? Yes. Let's get you guys blindfolded. There we go. All right. Mr. Becker, are you very competitive? I'm fairly competitive. Okay. Yeah, same I same, think, I think, I'm I competitive think enough. Yep, I think he's quite competitive. If all else fails, just sing, okay? If all else fails, <laughs> just sing for us. All right, guys, okay. So, grab a hold of your spoons. You've got your spoons. Perfection is what we are looking for. And we are about to start the game in three. Two, one, and start, guys! Come on, Jamie! Oh, this is good, Jamie! I'm not allowed No, wait! Oh, I'm not allowed to use my hands. You're not allowed to use oh, your hands. God. I have Can to take a few out. <laughs> Let's start. There we go. There we go. No hands allowed. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, Jamie, come on, five, Becca, six, four, three, two, one. Oh, and your time is up. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man, it is embarrassing if you think about it. <laughs> you didn't say we're not allowed to use our hands there. Do you know what's embarrassing? It's all of the activity that was taking place, and meanwhile, you guys were scooping nothing, not much. <laughs> I like how you just decide, I'll just use that spoon <laughs> and my hands and put everything in. Uh, but I mean, it's pretty simple to see who our winner is of this particular challenge. I mean, this one is not even up for debate. Come on, guys, let's be honest. And also, oh. I cheated. No, 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 don't worry. I did take out a few okay. just to make sure that the, the game was... Uh, Only because you can game. sing. That's the thing. Whenever you are a singer, you have an advantage, so that is why... But I know it. I can get away with it. This but thing. you can you know twerk I mean? and nobody even, like, complains about anything like that. So, uh, the winner is Jamie Lee Dumberg! Oh, yes. Now, as the winner of the Philo Challenge, Jamie, you can choose what you want. You've got strawberry here, and then you've got the classic one as well as the chocolate one. Which one are you going to be going with? Oh, you finished yours, because I was, uh, I was going to say, bring me some of your chocolate, uh, and then I can... Cut, it's gone. That, the, stra <laughs> <laughs> the strawberry that you're eating right now looks yeah, so yummy. So yum. I think I'm going to go for the strawberry ones. Mm. Jamie, I know you're looking sad right now. I'll... I will give you some, OK? OK. I'll give you some. A little plastic bit tupper bag. In a Tupperware bucky for you to take home. You're going to okay? finish it before you drive out of our gate. Trust me, they are so, so good. Now, the new Jungle crunch lots fillers, they are a pure delight. Take it from me. So spoil your kids and yourself for the box, or two or a few, and if you're brave enough, why not try the fillers challenge at home and send us a video of you playing to our WhatsApp line. We'd love to see that, in fact. Send it to our number, 063-408-8863. Love to see it. I feel bad for you. I'm going to share some of my strawberry one that I bought this morning. Um, that would be great. Because now you look really, You look like, sad, eh? Sad. I'm, like, contemplating in my head okay. whether I should go to Checkers and buy something. Yeah. Okay, we'll <laughs> send you no. off to go get ready for your performance. <laughs> you. uh, in the meantime, do you think that Luca likes strawberry? He would love it. He would love it. He definitely will, but he also loves working out, so that's exactly what we're going to do right now. Okay, fantastic. Okay, well, go get these. They're delicious. Jungle Crunch Lots fillows. Enjoy these new oat-based creamy scented pillows as a snack or breakfast cereal. Oh, well, listen, our fellows get intense. And of course, you might not be the winner, but you are the winner when it comes to performing. And you are here to perform your latest release. I'm talking about Werner Becker with his track, Side of the Wild. Stay tuned, because this man is so talented and he's got an absolute incredible voice. Werner, the floor is yours. Thank you. There you ride 
take it easy now Don't get up All right, take a bow And don't say this Don't say that Don't say anything at all Until you learn the facts All right in biology and learn to lose all you dream to be and graduate at the top of your class forget love man you learn to outlast them so set your soul firmly in the sky Some friends take the straights with the rolling bends and take a while. You're all you can in time. You'll know what it means to be a man. As you set your souls firmly on the ground. Get off and tell her how you feel. Learn to fall, shift the balance on the wheel. You get one chance to love like a child, one chance to live life on the side of the wild. Woohoo! On the side of the wild. Werner Becker on your Feel Good Breakfast show. He's got one more performance on its way, so don't go anywhere. Let us know what you thought of this phenomenal performance. You can head on over to social media and include that hashtag Expresso Show.
back for show you on S3. Now, studies have routinely found that athletes, especially female athletes, are often iron deficient. To find out more about this, Dr. Fareed joins us to discuss why iron deficiency is common in both male and female athletes and the impact it has on them. Doctor, are athletes more at risk to being iron deficient Absolutely. and why is this the case? So obviously you're making your body work harder to try to achieve things, inhuman things, impossible things. Um, well not everybody, some people like a 5k, but when or your body... Or what I think that's called walking to work. So what you have to do is we need to maintain these structures in our body that are being overworked. They need lots of oxygen. They need lots of minerals. Uh, I need to be able to get the oxygen to those tissues really quickly, which is where my iron comes in hugely. Because of the damage being done to the muscles and the ligaments and the tendons and the bone from recurrent, and I'm talking about harder exercise, endurance types of exercise. And no, let's not forget our, our power and st strength types of exercise exercises. We actually lose iron because of the rapid repairing that's always taking place. So it's actually quite interesting that athletes almost make themselves sick every day by hurting their bodies and then have to leave their bodies to re recover and to heal to then be a little bit stronger tomorrow to be able to go a little bit further the next day. So it's very important that they can recover well before they strain their bodies again, and iron plays a massive role in this. So iron is absolutely critical. Almost all your, your minerals and nutrients are important for all your athletes. I want to break it down. Female and male endurance athletes, are they equally affected by iron deficiency? Women might need more iron around their period times. We know they're more prone even to injuries around their period times. So iron, super important in your ladies, and even in men, you know, you starting to get to one in six men might be deficient in iron, especially in your athlete group. And it's partly because, in fact, in athletes, it's not always nutritional because they are eating well or they're trying to hopefully. So not eating well as an athlete is a crime. Then not being consistent with uh, recovery and supplementation, very, very important in your athlete who wants to progress and allow his body to recover and heal and to be well for the 50 years after he stops exercising. So absolutely, th these two groups remain uh, high risk with exercise and without exercise, but more so with exercise. And I mean, we've been touching on this for a couple of weeks now that, you know, iron deficiency can affect your overall health in the long run. But with regards to athletes in the performance space, how will that then affect them again in the long run? So I, with endurance specifically, it's the most noticeable. If you're doing something which is a short, uh, high impact uh, resistance thing like weights, you may not be as um, aware of the iron deficiency because iron really starts to play a role as my body starts to heat up, as my heart rate starts to increase, as my blood pressure starts to maintain a good blood flow around my body, brain right down to my feet, back up to my heart again. And iron uh, is so important in the production of blood. So my bone marrow is stimulated by exercise, which means my body wants to make more blood. And this is again using more iron to try to feed the system that needs to work and, and function at a high level. So many athletes are probably taking, you know, iron supplements to make sure that their performance levels are being reached, but are they getting enough of that key mineral to make sure that their performance is reached to the best of their ability? So, uh, it, it's, it's a such a good question because uh, you can really fall into the trap of assuming you're eating right, you feel okay, and maybe even taking a supplement, but if you're not testing, you really don't know. So I really recommend that all athletes who are pushing themselves to high levels of, of exercise, endurance, sport, competitive sport even, that they really just actually go and have it tested. You can't assume. And what is the best way for athletes to go out there and get tested to make sure that the iron levels are correct and they will be able to put their body through all of the stuff that they are doing? So we recommend a full series of tests. So one thing that's nice about athletes who are functioning at these levels and entering these competitions is they're used to spending money on their health. So they really don't have an excuse to skip this part. And it's, it's, it's like a, a runner would spend a lot of money on his shoes, but really there's something in this engine that's got to keep those shoes working. And so they have to do a full blood count and they have to do what we call a full iron profile. So they need to know where is the iron? Is it in the blood cells? Is it outside the blood cells? And then what is the store of iron? Because this is what my body taps into when it starts to push itself. So it's 
quite a comprehensive test that we would recommend for them to do. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't risk just the quickie test that go, oh, that looks fine. And definitely you almost don't trust how you feel because when we exercise, we feel wonderful. But it's a bit of an illusion created by my mind because we just do love feeling good and fit. So you can sometimes f uh, believe that you're fine while well, you're not actually. How, how do we say thank you? Because you have just been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down on the couch and answer all of our questions. It, it's nerve-wracking, but it's such an important message. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Well, there you have it. Everyone does get tired from time to time, but if you do feel exhausted every day, you may be suffering from fatigue, which is a symptom of iron deficiency. If you are concerned about your symptoms, it's important that you find out with certainty whether iron deficiency is the reason by speaking to your doctor in order to work out what is causing your symptoms and also how to treat it. One in two healthy South African women suffer from iron deficiency. Speak to your healthcare professional about getting tested and treated for iron deficiency. Brought to you by Ferrymed. I absolutely love that conversation. Thank you so much, Jamie Lee Domberg. Of course, it is Health Tuesdays, and we're carrying on with that trend, and especially if you heard the conversation about iron deficiency when it comes to athletes. So all the athletes out there, this is your opportunity to stand up, and anyone that's budding to become an athlete, I know for our show especially, we do so many workouts, and people are being inspired by us, but we also get inspired by you. And we happen to stumble upon a video from Ikram in Heidefeld, who's doing some incredible work on his bike at home, showing us that there's absolutely no excuse to get a training session in I mean, these guys are literally not going anywhere. They're in the comfort of their own home, but they're still getting a good cycle on and working out the legs. And uh, we've been inspired so much by this video from uh, Ikram again, out all the way in Haderfeld, that we thought, let's continue with the leg workout trend and do something special right now on your Feel Good Breakfast show. So we brought in the specialist, Kyle Eli in the building. Bow, 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 bow. He's here to deliver something special. Of course, the theme is quite great because it's almost about not having any excuse to work out. You don't need exactly. any equipment. You can always do something at home. And... Uh, you got something for us to kind of continue with the leg workout trend mm -hmm. at home, right? Mm -hmm. What do you got, my man? Okay, cool. So firstly, um, a lot of people have excuses yes. not to exercise at yes. all, right? Well, today we don't have any excuses. Yes. Today we'll be using the couch. We'll okay. Using a little basket over there. Okay. Oh, you just literally looked at random things. You're exactly. like, let's use it. Okay, I like that. Should I grab this now? Yes, please. Put okay. It over here. So do you hear Zamzanzi literally like grabbing random things in the studio? If you have a bunkie or a chair, Carl's using a couch. It doesn't matter. But these are creative ways to still get a good workout in. And again, thanks to Ikram for that video because this is what's inspiring us today. All right. So let's get into this. What okay. am I doing with a bunkie? What are you doing with a couch? Okay, cool. My first exercise or our first exercise yeah. will be we put our leg or sit. Single legged. Okay. One there for me. All right. Slightly forward. Slightly forward. And we okay. drop him all the way down, just like him forward lunge. All Up right. And squeeze. Ooh, the burn immediately. You have to squeeze. One. You In always have glute, yeah? Yes. All, all the right. way down. Now, Zanzi, this is maybe Up. just the top tip at the same time. Make sure that whatever structure or bunky you are using is actually stable. You don't want to injure or hurt yourself during an exercise. I mean, that's yeah, the worst exactly. thing you wanted to do. So make sure you've got something stable. I've got a nice stable bunky here, but just make sure before you actually get into the exercise. And then the rest is just all about the good burn and the mm -hmm. gains and, and the squeeze, and baby. And maybe, Always the squeeze. Maybe if you're lucky and you work your legs out hard enough, you might look like this man over here. He was at SA Menswear Fashion Week. Saw him in that speedo in the boots, dude. You look so good. <laughs> so check this guy online. He wants some more leg inspiration. But let's carry on with the workout. I need What's another next? one of those. Another one. I'll take right. this one. Like you grab that one, just remember, be careful. It might not be as strong, so let's just be easy with this. For what sure. are we doing next? Okay, cool. We're doing pause squats. Pause squats? So usually you do to the barbell, right? right? So you go all the way down. Okay. Sit, take tension completely away, and back right. up. Squeeze. Oh, so you can wait, wait this, like get a yes. bag on your back Potato or something bag. cool. There we go, another gym mat coming at you, a potato bag. A bag of potatoes is perfect enough. That's probably like a 20 kilo bag or something like that. Yeah, 10, 15, 20, up to you. Nice. All well, depends on how strong you are. I like this also. The pause is forcing engagement. It's forcing me to also stimulate all the muscles to kind of explode me up. So the hip, hip drive's coming in nicely over here. Exactly. That's like, nice. you know when you're racing a car? Yes. Start line? Yes. Exactly the same thing. I like that. Squeeze. I like that. Okay, cool. All right. That's Jump right. Hacks 101 using anything at home. I love this. Absolutely okay. no excuse from Zanzi. What's next? So um, our next exercise will yeah. be close legged squats. So target the outer sweep. Okay. We always tend to forget about the outer sweep. We yes. always focus on the tier. Yes. Right? So feet nice and close. Arms forward all the way down. Cheap as you got good range on you. I can't even Up. get there. <laughs> well, go as right. as you I can. need to work on my mobility clearly. I watch this man on the left. Ooh. 
Our back is tight. We... I couldn't even get there. I need to do some more warming up. Mzanzi, see how you can go on this challenge over here, keeping the legs nice and close to each other. Please, last as you one. can see, Carl's got beautiful mobility, and I'm trying to get as low as this guy, but I can't. Oh! oh. Yes. Clearly, some mobility issues on my side, so I need to work on that. And this is a great exercise to also highlight any of those imbalances, like mine, clearly. Lower back, glutes are tight. But I absolutely love this. This is a perfect way to get a workout in, like we said. No excuse whatsoever, but we're still no stimulating excuse. the legs. Just a quick one. How many reps and sets for each of those workouts? So, between 8 and 10 reps. If you're not working with the reps, you use time. 30 seconds to 60 seconds based on your intensity nice. that you want to go. Absolutely love it and absolutely inspired. Again, from Ikram in Haderfeld, thank you so much for sending that inspo through. And, of course, thank you for sending that inspo no through on your online account and no letting no us problem. see those beautiful legs of yours, man. Yeah, no Absolutely problem, inspired, baby. Mzanzi. I hope you have been too. Remember, no excuse. Go get your workout on. Yes. I loved it, man. Nice. <laughs> oh, you can make my day. God, feminine hygiene masters. Feel Good Breakfast Show and Werner Becker is on stage for the last time this morning and he'll be performing his final single called Quarter Life Crisis, which is something I'm going through right now. So take it away, Werner. <laughs> Maybe we're all misguided. Maybe these tracks don't lead where the road used to be. The suit and tie just don't fit me anymore. Feel like it don't suit my life and mine the way it did before. Smooth sailing down for the new. Gotta take it to the places where I first laid eyes on you. Ain't it strange, ain't it funny? We had all that time and money, but now we're on the wrong side of 20. still hear Richard playing the hobo song in the early morn for the light could reach our eyes and blind them feels like we saw each other every goddamn night and we sang smooth sailing down fourth avenue gotta take it to the places where i first laid eyes on you ain't it strange ain't it funny we had all that time and money but now we're on the wrong side of 20 
chewing gum, freshen up the air. Quarter life crisis, no more truth or dare. More space, less time, catchy song, bad rhyme. Honey, can't you see we're on the wrong side of 20? for show please take a bow please take a bow Werner wow, Becker on your that. real good breakfast oh. show. Wow, what a talent. That was so amazing. Mm. There's something about his voice. It, it takes you somewhere. Like it's got a it's got a nice retro feel to it, but with a newness to it. Very much like what we've got happening on the show tomorrow. Indeed, hey? we are making potato bake. We're also making Oma under the Combers and Ooh. some Sago pudding. Yes. Oh, yes, it's all about retro foods in the kitchen tomorrow mm. morning. And what is your all-time favorite dish? Think about it as we're going to connect mm. with you tomorrow what again. Send us at WhatsApp. Well, uh, come here. Yeah. Don't be shy eight. now. Oh, don't leave me. I'll be fine. <laughs> come. Come. Yes, come so so Thank you so much for joining us on our Tuesday. I love the show today. Yeah. And uh, I can't wait for tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie was just giving us the cell phone number. 063-408-8863. That's the number. Send us your retro-inspired recipes, foods you like to make. We'd love to connect with you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Good Same morning. time. Love you. Yes. <laughs> Are we going to the gym now? We can if you want. Okay. Oh, you're, you're gymnastic well, now. We're all going with uh, Tabisa to gym today. Let's that is, do it. That's we what love you, South Africa. <laughs> uh, have a great day. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Here's to the sweet taste of time off, celebrating the lust of summer, and to family memories made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.